Should be this your boy N O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. And this is Drink Chess, motherfucking crazy, motherfucking hill of the hour. And that's one of all that goddamn <laughs> shit. Make some of that. Oh! Oh, it's and right now, when you're looking at Drink Champs and you say that we started this show for, we said we wanted to have a show that we, you know, salute our legends. And salute them now, not salute them when they in the coffin and all this. And when you look at this brother that's to the left of me, not only is he a Queens legend. Facts. He's a New York City legend. Facto. Not only is he just a New York City legend, Facto. he's a hip hop, hip -hop legend. legend. Yeah. He has stood by the culture and put the culture on his back in many different scenarios. I remember he even had a daytime talk show. I was watching that too. He was like the Jenny Jones of the, and he kept it hip hop. He kept it hip hop. He was having the suits on, but he kept it hip hop. He's a part of a legendary group. One of my favorite songs of all times, Get the Gas Face. He a part of that. He later on went to have a solo career and then had success putting on one of arguably the best MCs of all times. After that, he went on and started doing radio. Heard he got a podcast coming up now. Books, all type of crazy shit. Hustling, even white rapper shows. Hmm. Had to do with everything. I can keep going. So in case the people don't know who I'm talking about, we're talking about the motherfucking MC motherfucking Shaq. <laughs> you, you are truly an all-around hustler. Hey, when you're from Far Rockaway, Queens, you only God got damn. one way to do it. God damn, make some noise for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta it, you gotta get it how you get it, you know? But um, I owe you uh, flowers uh, mm. because I'm able to do my podcast because mm. of the success that you've had here. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, you know, create, you know, the f Timeless Podcast Company because of right. the success that you've had. Yeah, well, that's so. a beautiful thing. Let's make some noise for that once again. Let's do it. We know you ain't drinking, but we, the search is how we do. Um, I'm which aware. bottle do you prefer I drink? Um, hmm. This is, I'm a champagne no, no, guy. No, I know, so. and I see that. Um, I think you should go with the rose. Rose? Uh, yeah, everybody picks rose. rose. Everybody picks rose. rose. Okay, we're right. attractive. We're going to be gold yeah. after this. Okay, after we drop the gem, we'll be gold. And after that, the platinum. So let's, let's, let's take it from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. The beginning when hip hop first came on the scene, um, you started out as a third bass? Is that where? No, it, no, no, okay. no. I was, I was a solo battle MC. Really? Yeah. So okay. when, I, um, when I was coming up, um, you know, it was, mm. it was just. So you got to imagine taking the A train mm -hmm. from Far Rockaway mm -hmm. to when I went to high school, uh, music and art. On 135th and Convent. Uh, um, that's uh, Mahal, Mahal. 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 Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. my favorite group mm. that I heard in the street on those cassette tapes mm. was a group called the Kango Crew. Mm. Four MCs. Mm. They had little skits that they would do around mm. like Uptown and all of that. Mm. Hillbilly Girl, mm. Indian Girl, like funny mm -hmm. shit. And um, it was, you know, four dudes. And I went to my first day at high school. And I went to the lunchroom and I see the cypher. In the lunchroom. I need regular cups. And, um, yeah, I ain't giving me no regular cups. We miss Mr. Lee. Let me get a regular cup. Go ahead. High school. And um, mm -hmm. I see these dudes rhyming around the lunch table. Mm -hmm. So I go stand on the lunch table and I see mm -hmm. these four dudes and they're doing the routine. Right. And then they got all the matching colored kangos. Right. They got right. the Latifah shirts. That was that era the, of yeah, that, right? Yeah, 1980. Right, right, right. right. And the dude that was next to me was like, they, we had a big brother, big sister program where a freshman and a senior would walk you around the school. Mm -hmm. So my man Steve Bosco may rest in peace. Mm -hmm. I turned to him and I said, "Yo, they doing the Kango Crew," and he said, "Motherfucker, that is the Kango Crew." Oh, shit. Right. 
And it was. Oh, you thought they was impersonating the yeah, cat? Yeah, okay, yeah, because okay. I've never seen okay. rappers in person, and right. I, all I heard was these fourth and fifth generation cassette tapes. Right. Mm-hmm. So I never seen them in person. I just knew the dudes' names. Were you starstruck? Please, man. I never yeah. seen a star in my life like that big. Right. And um, it was a guy named Ricky D, right. who became Slick Rick. Wow. It was Dana Dane, who became Dana Cinderella Dana Dane. Dana Dane. Right. Right. And their homeboys, Lance Romance and Omega. And that was the Kango crew. Yeah, that was the Kango Whoa. crew. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So and then the right next to the wow. right <laughs> And then they stopped doing that. And then all of a sudden, this dude beatboxes, and his mm-hmm. name is Dougie Fresh, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they start doing this record called Lottie Dottie. Now, I'd never heard before. Well, you're witnessing mm-hmm. history right now. So I knew all the words to Lottie Dottie before yes. Lottie Dottie ever came out in 85. And, wow. and this is a fact, though, I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. I was so enamored with it that when I went back around my way, mm-hmm. I knew nobody heard it. So I started saying them rhymes like they were mine, right? right? right. And to impress girls, Lottie, so I go on, right? we like to party. Lottie, we don't call me and my man Kev Love, right? right. Uh-huh. So 85 record comes out, and I'm at McDonald's in Limbrook coming out of Hot Skates. Right. And the record comes on, Red Alert plays it. Because, you know, Kiss FM, they had the mid, you know, shows Friday, Saturday night. And the girl that was dating, this Dominican chick who had hooked me up with free Big Macs, mm. was, was at the counter. And mm-hmm. she goes, oh, sh- oh, oh, shit, there's Ricky D. Mm-hmm. Dominican always got the hookup. And the dude yeah. behind me goes, motherfucker, that ain't Ricky D. Right. <laughs> it blows up my spot, so right. I boogie. But it was that indoctrination right. and watching the dudes. Like, right next to him was this dude, J. Cool. Mm-hmm. And J. Cool and his brother formed the Fresh 3 MCs. Mm-hmm. And before I left high school, I'm hearing F-R-E-S-H. Fresh, 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 yo, that's fresh. Mm. Pumpkin and All Stars. You know, I was having um, OC and Crazy Eddie were coming to my school, dating mm. this girl, Nichelle. They, were, they had a record this called Problems crazy. of the World Today. Like, mm. So I'm like 17 years old, and I'm like, damn, like, I can do this. And my man, mathematics and understanding, were like, no, you can watch it, right. but you can't be a part of this. You a white boy, you a right. devil. Oh, right. you, could, you, could, you, could, you could come to and the dinner is, table. Is, what, wasn't the Beastie Boys out like no, before? No, no, no. no. Wait, so, okay, so this okay. is 84. Okay. Okay. No, yeah, so no Beastie Boys was 88? Beastie Boys came in 86. 86, 86. 86. Yeah, okay. Beastie Boys 84, okay. Right. This is mad early. All right, all right. Because I graduated high school in 85. So I actually graduated high school with Mark Pitts, Changing Faces, all the time. So I knew I could do it. Like, I knew I could do it, but I wasn't really allowed to do it. So I was just a battle MC. Wow. So I was basically, my man Math and my man Understanding would have me battle all through, like, the five boroughs. Right. And they were moving their little thing, things, right, right? right? Yeah. So they would go to, you like... You got the flat top, right? right there. I, not, not yet. Not I, had yet. A, I had a Jufro, oh, okay. I had a crazy <laughs> Jufro. Right, cool, 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 cool. But, um, um, so what they would do is... Because one of the things I learned early on was, like, when, the, when people started battle rhyming, they all, all had pre-prepared rhymes. Right. Nobody was rhyming off the top of their head. Right. Right. Freestyle. So I'm like, so yeah. I'm like, yo, that's gonna be my thing. Right. Like I'm, I'm a freestyle. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come off the top of my head and be right. just as good and, and better. Right. right. Better. Right. Fuck good. Better. Because right. I had to be ten times better. Because right. I'm the only fucking white boy out. The only <laughs> other white people you saw at the park tents was the police. Right. I was the only white boy. Out. You said the police? Yeah. Oh, okay. that was the only one. Right? <laughs> so, okay. so, so, um, <laughs> so they would set up these battles for me and I would show up at the, you know, these little jams or whatever. Right. And as soon as I came up the subway steps, whatever little money was being bet, as soon as they were like, oh, that's MC Search, the money would triple. Wow. Like, oh yeah, oh no, we got him, we got him, we got him, we got him. Right, right. So hold on, hold on. Is this similar to like white man can't jump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're picking yeah, you, I was the like original you, white, yeah. yeah. I was the original <laughs> white man can't jump, bro. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. So like, so, like, that's so like these dudes, so okay. white, yeah, man so right, 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 no, white man can't rap. Right, white man can't do shit. Like, yo, yo. And, no, and, and, and I wasn't even a white man, it was the devil. What? Devil can't do shit. You're not just white, you're the devil. You guys are white devil. Like, let's be clear. Like, For people, let's describe this era. This era is heavily infused by... A, a culture of five yeah. percent, mm-hmm. which was which. So I don't want people to think like that. That was just. It, it was just at that time. It no, was it was at that dude. time. Listen, right. it was a black art form, and it was right. no. Right. The only white boy I ever saw rhyme ever was this kid, Lord Scotch, aka Blake, right. um, who now writes Keo. Like he right. was the first white rapper I ever saw. Mm. So. I would come up the steps, and then the numbers would triple, and they would be like, oh, 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 that search, oh, 100, 200, 300, right? So it'd be the cypher, and these dudes would start beating, beatboxing and rhyming for the dude in the project. So whoever, <laughs> Vandermeer, yeah. Moss, wherever, wherever yeah. they were from. And they would battle me, but there was all pre-written rhymes. Right. 
So I, it was usually always two rounds. It never went three. It was always two rounds. So the first round, whatever the dude said to me, I, I, it went over my head. I would just break them down head to toe. I would just, I would just like look at what they were wearing. I would see what they were wearing, and I would clown them. Right. right. That was my first move. On the freestyle. Freestyle. Off the yeah. top of Was they pre-written for right. you? Or they Never. So, right. so, so, so Never. you're already ahead of them. Right. right. And not only that, right. the other thing that was crazy was because I went to a music school. Right. When they tried to do the beatbox, I'd be like, no, 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 I'm going to go acapella. Right. And they'd be like, yo, you, what do you mean you're going to acapulco? What the right. fuck are you talking about? Right? I'm like, no, I, I don't need no beat. I don't yeah. need acapella, right? right? So I would rhyme just off the top of my head with no beat. Right. right. So now, you know, now you got me saying shit about what you're wearing, and right. now all their boys are like, oh, right. oh, this is a problem. Right. Right? And mind you, I'm by the train. Like, I'm right, right. by the train. So the battle's happening right by the train. So the second round, the dude is now shook. Always right. shook. Right. And now the second round comes, and now he's... nobody didn't want to lose to the white kid neither, though. Right. Definitely don't want right. that to happen. Right. But they, now, they but want now, to take the battle because no, they think they can win. But then at the end of the battle, they're like, but wait no, a minute. But, no, but then the lose. other thing, the temperature's yeah. going up because now all the stick-up kids are like, whatever he gets, we're going to get it back anyway. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> so that's that's the heat. That's a, right. you got to yeah. imagine the temperature's right. like going up. Right. That's real shit. So, right? Um, so now the second one, whatever he says to me, right. I'm taking all his words against him. Right. I'm like, oh, you said this, but you should have said this. So now I'm going to turn around and make it a diss and dismiss right. everything right. you just said. Right. And, I, right? and now they're like, oh, you know how that goes. Yeah, you know how that goes, right? Oh, my God. The devil. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so my man, Matt, so they would then pass the money to me. And as soon as I got the money, I would dip back to the train before the stick up happened. <laughs> and so I would hop the train and I was gone. <laughs> But just one time, you get away <laughs> right? Yeah, no, we had to get away. But that, and, and my boys were smart like that. Like they thought about it ahead of time. We we're like, you know, this is gonna be a problem. Right. And they weren't gonna fuck with my two boys because right. then they would fuck up the train, right? right. Like they didn't want the money to stop. Right. So it was, it was what it was. So this one, t- <laughs> this one time, I'm laughing, but it's nothing funny. This one time, so my, by like, so this happened like 1984, 85. By 86, 87, I'm a beast. Right. Like I'm like I got, my ten, thing. Yeah, yeah. I got my 10,000 hours plus right. another 10 right? right We do this one battle My man My man Reggie Reg Is DJing a party in Brooklyn Right And I'm battling this Latin kid A Spanish kid Right And I think I might have been Zooted at the time Like I might have been Smoking Woolers mm-hmm. At the time Woolers for those who don't know Is yeah, weed, weed and, and dust crack. Right, right? Oh, so dust. It was it was dust. dust It was dust, dust. Yeah, okay. it was dust. Right, So I was smoking okay. Woolers I think I, It might It might have been I'm not 100% sure but I'm on, but all I know is I'm on my way to Latin Quarter. Okay. So like it's a Friday night. Yeah. I'm gonna get my money right. I'm gonna go, you know. And my man was DJing in a park jam there anyway. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. Right. So this dude, this Latin dude, he already has an attitude, mm. and I'm already kind of. It's already known that there's this white kid MC Search and he's doing his thing, whatever. So the dude battles me, typical style. He got his written, and right. I break him. And I mean, I broke him to the point where his own girl is like trying to pass me the math. Right. Like, so his face right. is now screwed. Right. He got the screw face looking. At him. He don't even want to kick a second verse. Right. But he kicks his second verse. And when he kicks his second verse, I could see where his building was and where his mom was. And his mom calls to him right. in the middle of the verse, like, right. blah, 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 come. And he pulls out a pack of Newports to smoke a Newport. And I said, yo, it's, it's coincidental that your mom's calling you and you're picking out that Newport because I'm a smoke you. And before you say anything else, shh, caete la boca. Oh! <laughs> right? And this dude's face yeah. got yeah. great. Like, I've yeah. never seen a dude's face get like, <laughs> like, right? So I'm now, so now the dip happens. The, the dip happens. I get the money. I dip, right. and it was a big collection. It was like it was a lot of money. Right. Go to Latin Quarter, hang out, Paradise, you know, mm. the whole thing. You must have been four at the time, right? Yeah, four yeah, or five. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to Latin Quarter. I come back. I'm helping. My I've never man. been to the original Latin Quarter. I've been to the one that closed right. down five right. times after. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The Dominican <laughs> spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I went to the one right, on right. ninety six. So, I think right. the original was on eighty six. Okay. Mm. So. 
I come back, I'm helping my man break down his set. And at the time, and you'll remember this as a DJ, you had, had these crates, crates. Not even crates. You oh. had the, 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 the amps in the big the amps, but the, the amp was this everything. Big. I had yeah. a crown you amp. Everything. Yeah, you had to carry all the cars. Yo, yeah. sound yeah. system. Yeah. I was carrying a <laughs> Yugo. Like, I was carrying a Yugo, right? Turntables yeah. were everything. Yeah. 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 So we're breaking down. It's like 5 o'clock in the morning. So it's like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. It might have been 4 o'clock in the morning. And my man says something to me. I turn my head, I hear a pop, and the amp breaks in my hand. And he's like, yo, what the fuck you did? I'm like, what the fuck you mean I did? And I look, and as soon as I look, the dude's cracking back to 25. To shoot me a second time. Wow. So I'm like, oh, spot for dip. Bam! Wow. Right wow. to the train, gone. Wow. And I never battled oh, in the projects shit. again. Wow. And I realized that I was a beast. Like that, at that moment, wow. the fear and the adrenaline, wow. it manifested into something else. It manifested into the fact that I was a beast. Right. Like if somebody wanted to kill me, right, they want to get rid of you. Right. So let me bounce around a little bit. You worked in Detroit radio, correct? This is way later, though. I'm, gonna be, I'm just bouncing around. Mm -hmm. So being that Detroit radio and Detroit related to Eminem, mm -hmm. when you watch Eight Mile, I know I'm bouncing around all over. Yeah, okay, did you no, look no at that and say, man? <laughs> because that's like you know, you're describing the first. Eight my, and, and, and you know, and let's big up, you know, because Trick Trick sat in your, your same position. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's my man. But we didn't know hip hop was acting like that in Detroit. Like, we didn't know it like that. We knew it in New like York. The hip -hop and New York and was really, like, I'm talking about from back to, like, New York was really so. Did you look at Eminem's story and say, at first, is this like a little like copy some similarities? Of the words? Uh, yeah, well, similarities? I had met him. Okay. No, I met him okay. when he was signed to John Schechter's label, Game Records. So I heard Bad vs. Evil way before I was ever in Detroit. The oh, Infinite so, Happy? That, that yeah, was that? Yeah. Right, right. So when I heard M. That's before I was, he was signed with Dre? No, way before. Way, way before, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Way before. Oh, and this before he was down with the kids at Jersey. Way before. Wait, wait, that was yeah. And his first, uh, first uh, yeah, the Infinite Happy, he sounded like Nas and Jay Z, like a combination. Like, I, I, think, I hear people say he sounded AZ ish. That too. Like he had well, all those influences, influences at that time. You have to understand, his uh -huh. biggest influence, Marshall's biggest influence was Kane. Mm. Like, that's his favorite MC. Mm. So, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when I heard Bad vs. Evil... I like how you could call him Marshall. I like that. You know what I mean? I know him personally. You know, like, no, no, no. I mean, that's what he goes by. But I mean... That was but, a flaw. Like, you know, we, we, we don't know him, sir. Let me spray some cream. We don't know him, sir. So we got to call him Eminem over here, all right? That's not true. But you can call, okay, okay. call him Marshall, too. <laughs> but one of the things, when I went to Detroit... Um, I called Paul and I called M. Yeah, I see Paul as your man. Right. I, I, I was just watching some interviews and researching up on you. When you thought about doing your book, one of your first people you called was Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, Paul was heavy in, as a lawyer repping a lot of people in New York before Correct. M got put on. Correct. Really? A lot of the yeah. underground, yeah. yeah. A lot of and like he was the also, era people. Yeah. Like all and he was guys. also an MC. Wait, he was, wait, he was an MC yeah. and he was and he was raucous lawyer? No, he, no not no. raucous, but a lawyer for a lot of those MCs. That, that was, was all Like the backpack era. A lot of, like, yeah. like the guy who designed yeah. our logo, Scam. Get out of here. He, he repped him, and that's how Scam has a song with Eminem. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul, yeah. I didn't know that. My bad. I owe you yeah. some more respect. All right, my bad. So um, uh -huh. I called Paul, uh -huh. and I said, look, I'm going to come to Detroit. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And he's like, do it. He, he didn't even hesitate. He's like, do uh -huh. it. The city will show you so much love. Right. And um, M really showed me a lot of love. Like right. Because at the time, him and the station I was working at, JLB, right. didn't see eye to eye. Wow. But when 50 came into Detroit during the G Unit era, right, the we did a five day special with 50. Like when wow. M would drop something, he would come to me first. Like wow. when M had the Benzino beef, wow. he came to me first. Like wow. he really, really, really showed me a lot of love. And when wow. we did the Hip Hop Summit mm -hmm. with, uh, with Russell, Russell and I, Kobo, was there. I was there. I mean, it was like, I was right, there. Yeah, yeah, it was 13,000 13, people yeah. were in this. Yeah. I mean, 13,000 people to come hear rappers not rap right. to talk about economic independence. Right. Right. Nori right. spent 25 minutes talking about investments in property, right. talking about long term investments in stocks and bonds, and also yeah. protecting his royalties yep. through his lawyer and right. through his management. And that was right. the two most important right. things for him to make sure that he had right. proper when he was getting ready to start to invest. Right. 
Real right? shit. Real so that's shit. 2003. Real shit. Right. That's the only time that. I met Eminem ever in life. Is that time in Detroit hip hop summer? It's the yeah. only time. And he was so like, Eminem. it was amazing, like to see Nasir, yep. to see M, to see Nori, mm-hmm. and you know, and the truth I of the matter Russell is, was there. I mean, Russell was there. Obviously, Russell was there. Russell, Dougie Fresh. Um, there was a lot of people there. All right, let me but, bounce around because you just gave me the alley oop. Yeah, I mean, please. No, no, no. I'm gonna give you. The, right. I'm gonna give, there's gonna be plenty of alley oops, brother. I hope nah, you got your hops. Listen, listen, listen. Because I read somewhere that you had a choice between OC and Nas to sign. Damn, I was at the same time. No, no, no. I signed both. No, I signed I Nas. So it wasn't and a OC. choice. Yeah, it but, wasn't a choice. Yeah, I know. I know you signed them both. Okay. But, at one point, didn't you sign OC first? I did sign OC first. And he was on the original Black Back to the Gorilla Grant. Yeah, there's a remix. And there's the remix, remix is with Nas where he... No, uh, no, no, no. Okay. So this is... No. So okay. OC was already signed to Searchlight. Mm-hmm. He had Fudge Pudge out. Mm. You know, I, I love that, that verse. is mm-hmm. one of the greatest verses to me. Two mm-hmm. of the greatest verses in the early 90s is obviously Live at the Barbecue and Fudge Pudge. Okay, let me ask you something. Yes, sir. Make sure we go go back to our question. Live at the Barbecue came out first. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, cool. Continue your story. Yeah. All right, he was debating. He was debating. I don't don't like to Google sometimes. I got the guy right here. I'm going to ask him. Fuck Googling it. I'm sorry. Continue your story. No, and Mm -hmm. so when I met Monch and I met Poe and I was like, yo, I got to sign. Oh, I got to sign him. Um, Organized confusion. All right, organized. I'm sorry. Organized confusion. I t- I'm talking like we're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we I'm know, forgetting, I'm forgetting got, the whole yeah, world. Yeah, 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 is, is, yeah, yeah. Is, is we got a couple, like, right. four people who watch us. Right. Somebody wants to Google, we got to give them that information. No, 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 no. So, so we're going to create. Right. Mm. So I, I, signed o- I signed OC. And then um, I was in the studio working on my solo album. And Percy P, the Riddler, O, Nas came into the studio with my man Rob Tulo, Reef, Daddy wow. Free, wow. and Stretch. And they all came in. And we were going to do... Back to the grill regardless. Back to the grill then was going to happen regardless. Right. Um, and everybody did a verse. Oh, and Akinelli was there too. Right. Sorry, pardon me. Goddamn, yeah. God right. left right. We in the building, goddamn. Right. 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 So wait, Live at the Barbecue had already came out, right? It came and this is a play off of, that, off of that song? No, 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 no. This is now when I'm doing my solo album in 1993. This mm-hmm. is like three years later. Right. But it's not a playoff. Live at the Barbecue was 90? Is that same as 1990? Okay. I'm main saying source, playoff main because Live at the Barbecue and it's back to the grill again. It feels oh, like no, it's a playoff. No, 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 because we know. That's, that's, I never even wow, thought about that. that. Even think about <laughs> and, it, and it's not that's both crazy. times. No, no. Whoa. We had a song on our Cactus album called right. Kick Him in the Grill. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that's and that's, that's what OC was on, right? No, no. No, Kick Him in the Grill. No, Kick Him in the Grill was Chub Rock. Chub Rock. Okay, yeah. That was my back to the grill again was from Kick Him in the Grill. Right, got it. Because when we did shows, that was one of the biggest, like, when we did Kick Him On The Grill on tour, like, everybody loved that record. Right. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do Back To The Grill again. Mm, right. But I'm going to have other people on it. Yeah. And Red Hot Love Tone was already my man. Like, yeah. so I, he was right. in the lab anyway. Right. Right. And he wanted me to manage him as an artist, not as... When I was... Niggas give me hip-hop chills right now. When I was, at, when I was the senior <laughs> VP, when I was at Wild Pitch, right. and I brought O, mm. one of the records that was already there was Third Eye. Mm. And there's a record Da-da, with Jess, J- Jess West that we had called um, Put Your Boots On. Right. Let me tell you something. I was so fucking happy to be a Wild Pitch because I had OC, I had Jess West, yeah. I had Cool Keith, I had Large Professor, and I was just about to put out Illmatic. Like, right. I was about to be the hottest Are motherfucker in the game. Are you going way too fast right now? Yeah, I'm just getting that over you. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, that's crazy. So, it's like no, no, no. you're drinking, you ain't so, even drinking. So, yeah, that's why, that's, why, that's, why, that's why I don't drink and that's why I don't smoke, because <laughs> my mind goes. Honest, so, we go back to the grill, good. so we're doing back okay. to the grill again, right? Uh-huh. All those dudes come in, Nas stays behind. Everybody Nas says. I tells me, he's like, yo, I'm about to sign my deal at Warner Brothers. I'm not sure I can be on this single. I'm going to rhyme anyway, but I'm not sure I can be on it. Percy P and the Riddler, they also said they had deals. They didn't know if they could be on it. Always down with me, so it was going to happen. All right. So Nas stays behind. And when everybody leaves, Nas tells me, like, he got this deal he don't feel right about. And he wanted me to take a look at it. Right. And I said, I can't. Right. It, it'll, I can't. Like, it's legally, legally, I can't do it. I said, but if you sign a searchlight, I can help you. And he goes, well, what does that mean? I said, it's simple. It's a one-page agreement. You sign a searchlight. Production deal? Production deal. I'll furnish the album. I said, I won't take any money. I won't take any advance. I'll make sure you get the best deal in the world. And then on your publishing, I won't take any publishing. I'll take a 5% admin fee, which means I'll help the 
publisher administer your publishing to make sure people don't use your shit in a wrong way. So you're taken care of, and you'll keep all your shit. Right. And there's a one-page agreement, and he goes, all right, I got to think about it. Because he's 17 years old. Like, right. you know. So he's like, I, so I was like, oh, he's never coming back. <laughs> he's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even I knew, like, in 93, yeah. he's going to be the greatest MC of, our, of all time. And you knew this over one verse? Off of one verse. And that one verse, one of the credits said, Live at the Barbecue. Let me put it this way. Okay. When I heard yeah. CNN's first album. No, 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 but I did it for free. I, like, I worked that record God damn it, for sir. free. We'll give you a flower. We'll give you a flower. This story is too crazy. So the next day, so the next day, I'm in the studio working on Back to the Grill again. Okay. Nas shows up with Jungle, right. his brother. Yes, that's right. They throw four blunts on the table, <laughs> and he says, "Explain this to me." Mm. So I said, "This is how it's going. This is how it's going to work. This is right. how it goes down. I'm going to shop your deal. I'm going to go back right. to you know those guys. I'm going to make sure that they do the right thing if that's where you want to be. But if they that don't get faith, the right, new faith. This is before faith. This okay. is Stretch Armstrong this is where I this. And, and Rob and Reef at Big B, who offered him the deal first. That's the deal he felt funny about. I ain't know this. at Big B. Yeah, I ain't gonna big lie. Beat, right? I ain't gonna lie. You schooling me right now. That's right. why I knew to get so, you. Stay right here. Go ahead. Right I'm not here. moving. I'm not moving. <laughs> I got my seatbelts on. You, 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 you I'm just, right just to get the. Because I ain't gonna lie. I don't think I ever heard this. But who, who's that big beat at the time? Just to understand that era. He said Stretch and Bob Beetle, you said? Or Stretch no, no, so, no, but those Stretch are the and Reef. Reef, Reef. Okay, they were in a And Craig Kalman was the head of Big Beat. It was his label. So he's not at Atlantic. He's not at Warner, Craig Calvin, at this time. It's part of the Atlantic system. Okay, go ahead. But he's got his own imprint. Okay. He put out the Double X Posse. He was putting out the Mm. Artifacts with Reef, who had signed those groups. Mm. And they were going to sign Nas. Okay. So we we just get to smoking and chilling. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to fuck with you. Signs the paper. The next day, I go to a reef and stretch. And I said, guys, the deal you offered him is the same deal that I signed in 1988. Mm. It's, not, it's not a good deal. It's, he's the greatest MC of all time. You, you, you don't even need to hear anything else, right. right? And reef and stretch felt some type of way about it. And I, and I understand that. They're like, yo, why are you getting involved? And I said, look, he, he asked me for my help. When you guys left, he asked me for my help. I saw the deal. It's the same deal that I fucking signed to Def Jam in 88, which to this day in 2021, I've never seen a check. I've never seen a royalty statement. Damn. I've never seen publishing. I never got shit from fucking Left Hand Records. I mean, Def Jam Records, right? Wow. So I said, I can't let him sign this deal. Wow. Just, tell, just make the deal right. They said, well, how do you make the deal right? I said, remove the publishing. When I, if you want to sign this publishing, that's a separate deal. Bump this up, bump that up. I stayed there for about five hours. Because they were my men. They were my friends. Right. Right. And finally, Craig Kalman, through those guys, said, we're not changing the deal. Ping! Out. I went to Russell. Next move. I went to his apartment on 4th and Broadway. Okay, I heard this. Russell says to me, he sounds like G-Rap, and G-Rap don't sell no records, so I'm not interested. Oh, shit. Cool. Gone. I went to Columbia, and I went to Faith. Faith didn't let me leave. He signed an amazing deal. And then once I left that deal... I went to Zamba Publishing because I had a great relationship with Richard Blackstone, who was the head. And, and Zamba is, um, just correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that Jive? It's Jive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so Jive is the record label, Zamba okay. is the publishing, Zamba's the publishing right. company, like Warner, Warner Chapel. Yes, sir. Okay, continue. So I know my shit went, sometimes. So, so I, ain't gonna I went let me, to let me them, and they said, how many songs are you going to have on the album? I said, probably 12, right? He said, well, you know he's only going to get paid on 10. I said, okay, fine. But that was standard 10 back to 12, then. Right. That was standard. They gave me a check. For Nas. I went to the 40 side. 40 because side burden. one thing Nas said to me, I said, what do you want? He said, all I want is to get my mother out the project. He said, if you can help me get my mother out the projects, we good. I went to see him with two checks for 300000 I said, move your mother out the project. Wow. Oh. And yeah. Illmatic was, was born from that day. Yeah, like you still that. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't like Illmatic just before after that. All right, so boom. And... One more noise. Uh, made the Library of Congress. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So now you get the check, right? You, you guys, you get the check. All right. 
Now, how does the actual making of Illmatic start? Because I, 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 when we Google you, they credit you for executive producer Illmatic, and it was written. Correct. All right, so let's just stay on Illmatic. Yeah. So, so it was really simple. My, my role was really simple. Make everything easy for Nas. Mm -hmm. All I, I, obviously, I could not help him make a record. Like, that's right. fucking ridiculous. Right. Right. right? It's like a blind man helping Picasso. It wasn't going to happen. Right. So all I know I could do Really is never heard that type just of clear. analogy, and I like it. <laughs> I'm still a no. Picasso. Okay, I'm still an MC. Don't right, get it right, fucked right, up. Right, you right, got right. bars. So, you got, so, got, so, still got bars. <laughs> so my job was simple. Whatever the producers made, I made sure the samples were cleared. Period. Okay, Serge, I just want to stop you for one second. Yes, but that's important. Because, what he just you know said when right I now. say you know, I say like you know a lot of times I say. You know, Pharrell came to me, and I just knew this guy was going to be the next next guy. I just knew it, and it's easy for me to say, but you got to. I want you to really break it down for people that who, who will never actually visual, visualize that actual time era, because Russell says something to you that's very vital to this conversation. Okay, is at that time lyrics were you were the dopest guy, mm -hmm. but you might not necessarily be the richest guy. Mm -hmm. So how does this process start of this Illmatic and, yeah. and, and, and what role was you yeah. playing so, at that? Okay. Yeah, so one thing I tell young artists all the time is that the most important part of the journey when you sign a contract isn't the advance. It's how many points you get mm. from your record. Mm. Nas's first album, he had the same points as Billy Joel, wow. and Billy Joel had been an artist for 20 years. Wow. Because I wanted to make sure that he was protected. Wow. I also made sure that the recording budget was really low. Right. So he wouldn't have any recoupment. Recoupment, right. right. But I also meaning, knew- For people that don't know that, meaning he wouldn't owe a lot. Before he sees money. money off the album, right. they have to recoup right. Right. everything right. spent on right. the album. And you said that it was important for them, for you to get all the samples cleared, Correct. which in that right. era, yeah. people I were not, That's still not you. clearing a lot of right. samples, which was ruining their careers as well. Why I've never seen a check from a third right. base record. Because back then, when, they, when you sampled, they would take 100% of your publishing. Mm -hmm. They didn't care if you was even paying them, or was it like that? Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't clear it, they could do whatever they want when they come back in court. Now, that's what they're doing now. That's what these young motherfuckers is doing now. Like, they just sampling this shit, get in court, and just say, hey, just take this shit. But back then, they were at least trying to clear the sample. Well, we tried. We tried. Okay. But with, with us, it was different. With us, it was... And when I say us, it was a team. It was my man, Sake, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Mark Pearson. Mm -hmm. I got to give him his flowers because I don't think he gets enough rec recognition. He was my GM at Searchlight. Okay. I mean, so, like, Mark ran day to day. So, right? Nas was never signed to Wild Pitch. It was Searchlight? He was, run he was signed to Searchlight Columbia. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. But, but for all intent and purpose, it was Columbia. Okay. We were just the production company. Okay. So, if you see the first print, it says executive producer Faith Newman, MC Search. Mm -hmm. There's a little Searchlight production logo on the bottom. Okay. But it wasn't our label. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to make sure all the samples were cleared. So anytime Primo did a record, anytime any of the other producers did a record, I said, give me all the samples, <coughs> clearance information. All right. Cleared all the samples, got it all done, all under budget. Everything was done. When the album came out April 23rd, that first week we did 165,000 albums week one. Nas was a millionaire week one. He's never, un he's never Whoa. had an unrecouped week in his fucking career. Ever, ever. And that's, unheard unheard noise, and that's unheard of. That's unheard of. Now the other side of that, yeah. the unfortunate side is OC, right. which is a story I've never told. Okay, we need to hear so, this. That's why I asked you, that's like, um, it was like OC and Nas was right. almost like, some would argue that even at one point, OC was the go-to guy. That's why I asked you. It felt right. like you signed OC first, but you, you had... No, no, no. I did sign OC first, okay. and I got him his deal when I went to Wild Pitch. Okay, so now let's take it from okay. where you just said. You said so, yeah. The OC so with side. OC, when we signed OC to Wild Pitch, we had... Wild Pitch was going through EMI, right? I was no longer going to make records with third base. I'd already put out my indie, my independent record, and not solo record, sorry. Solo record with Def Jam. My wife and I were going to have our first child. And third base was on CBS, right? It was on Def Jam, Def Jam. Sony, okay. Def Jam, CBS, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. But it was Def Jam. Okay. So I did my solo record. It did, it did okay. We did about 400,000 copies. We had God two damn. number one records. It was okay. It wasn't God terrible. Damn. It was okay. Right. 
Um, but I took a lot of money off the table on that deal mm-hmm. because I never got shit from Russell before. Right. So I wanted to make sure I caked off, right. right? So when I made the decision to go to Wild Pitch, I said, I got to bring O with me. So my deal with Wild Pitch was, I'm going to have O with me and we're going to make his first album. Mm. O with, with Nas, Nas knew what he wanted, he did what he did and it was done. There was some, you know, like, there was some really cool moments during that time, like me driving him to Mount Vernon 40 times to go get 100 tracks from Pete, and they finally settled on that. But for the most part, like, with Q, Q-Tip, it was one and done. Primo was one. You know, it was really right. just simple. It was right. simple. LES, it was in his backyard. Like, whatever right. they did, they did. You know, it right. was all of that. And it was easy. With OC, OC would bring me track after track after track, and I'd be like, nope. Because for me, as a guy who loves hip hop and had the real privilege, like, and it's, I say it as a privilege, like I was the Forrest Gump of hip hop at one point. Like anything that ever happened from like 1985 to whatever, I was there. I was there when Skylar Rock died. I was there when KRS and Melly Mel battled in Latin Quarter. I was, I mean, I was there at every juncture of, I was there when, Public Enemy got booed off the stage of Land Quarter and a year later came back with Rebel Without a Pause. Like, I mean, I was, I was there. Like, I was, I, I like witnessed in the it. Film you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, was, you know, I was there. Um, I was there when G-Rap told me there was a kid in, in, in Left Rack, <laughs> a.k.a. I-Rap, him and his man were coming together with a group. I was there I because he lived G-Rap. around the corner yep, yep. and yes, he had he an did. artist named White Boy. Oh, oh, yes, he did. Damn, yes, he did. You know, right? White Boy. Yeah. White Boy. Right. White so, Boy Jones. So, right. Yeah. So, I was just the Forrest Gump of hip-hop. I was mm. everywhere, mm. right? So with O, he'd make song after song after song, and I'd say, no, right. we're not ready. It's not ready. You're not ready. It's not ready. And it got to a point where we almost, like, on a regular basis, we would almost get to fisticuffs on the roof of Wild Pitch, like, right. where I thought every time, like, I might get thrown off the roof or he might get thrown off the roof. Like, right. But I said, please, I said, oh, just trust me. Trust me. Right. When you make the right record, We'll know, and everything else will happen. Right. Please believe me. Right. I'm in my office. O comes in. He's dead silent. And he pushes me out of the way from my, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Right. And I said, oh, and he said, and he pressed the DAT player, and he put in a Dead DAT. Tom Lyris is hardcore. To- <laughs> and I, the, I, my, See, the hairs are growing. Like, yeah, yo, to this day. Yo, and I, yo, I, and I went, hair. oh! I lost, and, the, and my office went, oh my God, what's going on? They, I mean, they, and we hugged, right. and he said, that's the mm-hmm. one. We're done. And two weeks what? later, Word Life was done. Two mm. weeks, yeah, well, everything on. came. When that no main dropped. topic, everything, everything. What year was that record when that 94. record dropped? Yo, let me tell you something. I, I, I don't know where I'm at in the world, but I, that was hip hop, bro. When that. <laughs> I got a call from Flex right. at the tunnel. I'm in bed with my wife and my newborn. If you look at the OC album, Word Life, on the bottom left corner, there's a baby in a, in a, cat, in a bassinet with light shining on it. That's my daughter. Wow. That's my oldest daughter. Wow. I get a call at midnight. It's Flex from the tunnel. Come now. And my wife's like, you ain't going nowhere. I'm like, Flex just called me to the tunnel. I'm gone. Yeah. Like, I, I said, I love you, honey. You and I, will, we will work on our relationship. <laughs> but I'm gone. And I boogied. I mean, I boogied right. to the tunnel. And from my house to the tunnel right. was like 23 minutes. Right. I got there in 17. Right. By the grace of the most high, there was parking right on the block. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I scoot up, I cut through the line, Jessica lets me through, mm-hmm. I get to the DJ booth, he gives me a hug, he goes, watch. Whatever he was playing took off, vicka, 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 mm-hmm. and the whole crowd, ah, their time's limited, the hard rocks, rocks too, rap. Mm-hmm. And baby Chris, may he rest in peace, grabs me, he goes, I need to manage OC, mm-hmm. right? At that time, there was this, this was the, the parallel. There was Baby Chris, may he rest in peace, yeah. and he had Violator, right. so he had Def Jam. There was Puff with Big and Craig, and there was me with Nas and OC. Yeah. 
Right. And that was that was the that was the trifecta in New York. That was the trilogy. Right. You so said Chris had? Chris had Violator. So okay, he, okay, had, okay. he had he had Busta right. and he had, you know, so scenario, he had right. tribe, mm-hmm. he had, you know Native Tongue, basically yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, basically. Okay. But he was and he was the go to manager, mm-hmm. Puff was the go to producer, mm-hmm. and I was the go to executive production company. Right. And that's what we were, right? And that's right. how we kinda had this right. thing. The problem was I had O signed to the wrong label, and the other problem was I was a 24-year-old who didn't know shit about being an executive. Mm-hmm. And while Chris had Lior and Russell and James Cruz and Puff had Andre Harrell and this one, that one, I had nobody. Right. And I was making decisions, making grown man decisions as a fucking child. Because I'm just happy. I'm just happy to be making music. I'm right. just happy being able to feed my family and just being able to do what I love. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, right? right? But I know radio, right? right? So I, I know that part, right. and, I, and, I, and I know music. Right. But the everything else, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. And that's how I kind of, that's, that's where this fell. And Nas's deal was, I wasn't going to do a long-term deal with Nas. It wasn't set like that. And Nas right. didn't want me to do a long-term deal. Right. It was get him right. Do it was written. I didn't want to have my name on it. it was written, but I took care of all the business, mm. and that was it, right. right? So that was that. And then Wild Pitch folded, and as soon as it folded, I met Mark Echo, right. and I started building Echo Unlimited with Mark. Right, the clothing line. Yeah, wow. So you were a part of the beginning of the of the clothing line as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. yeah, I did all the marketing and promotion for Echo Unlimited at wow. the beginning. When I met Mark, Mark was doing shirts on Broadway, right. and it was Ill Bill. My man, who we, we later did nonfiction together, mm-hmm. who said to me, yo, I, there's this dude, he just does shirts, you should check him out, he needs help, it's Echo Unlimited. So we went from 95 doing, I don't know, a couple of hundred thousand a year, to when I left in 98, 99, we were at 957 million a year. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, so now it turned into complex media and all and of yeah, that. Yeah, and, right? and, and I was so thankful that Mark allowed me to see that, right. like to watch that. He let me watch complex grow. I'm, I'm dear friends with Rich Antonello and all the guys up there. Um, I even got a little clock made out of me and we, when we did the Madden 2000 on the, on the mm-hmm. Madden, the Echo team, I'm on that team. So I'm on the team too. Like, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, so it's like, you know, so I was one of these guys that I was fortunate enough that I was everywhere. Right. And I had the history of radio because when we were coming up, we were basically told, look, if you some fucking white boys that are going to get on black radio, you better know every black program director forward and backwards. Mm-hmm. Right? Because they weren't playing hip hop during the day. Not even on, right. on Kiss. Nothing. Yeah. So I had to learn all of that. I had mm. to learn who these people were. Mm. And I learned them. And not only did I learn them, but I appreciated them. Right. So the first radio station I ever went to to pitch my record, mm. Step Into the AM, was Helen Little mm. at DAS. And Wes Johnson at the time was the head. Third, of, so you had to work your own records. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I had to work. I mean, work them. So right. I'm about to break it down. So when we went to see Helen mm-hmm. Little at DAS in Philly, shout out to Philly. Yeah. Um, she was the first woman in urban radio to run a a, a group. Wow. DAS was like a group. Right. And when I went in there, I started telling her about her history. Started telling her how. That, I knew how she came up. I knew what she did because I went to the New York Public Library and studied. There was no mm. fucking Google. Right. Fuck a Google. Right. You know, Google was some a baby. Ma- that was a noise a baby made. You know what I mean? That was no fucking internet. You know what I mean? It was me going to the. But I knew them. Right. And by the, and, and my favorite story is, so we I went in there for forty five minutes. When I left, Wes went in there. Five minutes comes out, and and this is like a corporate urban station, mm-hmm. and Wes. Wes Johnson, may he rest in peace, was a, he was like a mixture between Jim Brown and Don King. Hair, <laughs> like this, six, seven. And he goes, you! Let me, I, I want to see you in the fucking back of the station right now! And I'm shook. Yeah. I'm fucking 6'1", 215. Yeah. He's fucking 6'6", six, 3-something. Six, and he says to me, meet me by the dumpsters. <laughs> you know what that means. Yeah. And I just said, and he pulls me in there and he goes, I want to know everything you just said to Helen Little. I want to know every fucking thing you just said. So my voice goes up about 10 octaves. I told her about what time she was doing. <laughs> and I run down everything. He goes, he goes, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, you little fucking white boy. Let me tell you something. 
I got Public Enemy, I got LL Cool J, I got Slick Rick. You know what the fuck you just did to me? He goes, I gotta go back there, tell them black artists, you're the first fucking rapper on Def Jam to have full-time rotation on fucking DAS. Mm, and whatever right. the fuck you just did in there, you're gonna do it at every other station we go to. We're going to uh, Philly, we're going to Baltimore next. Uh, uh. And I had to learn all those dudes, and he benefited. Right, let's make some noise for that, my I don't know if this is a rumor or not, but you wrote on Baby Kids. Mm -hmm. I wrote, I wrote five, four songs on Baby Kids. The soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, cool, I wrote, cool. I wrote I they, when they said I wrote that. the Jefferson song. I wrote the okay. Money song. Yeah, I wrote all of that. Oh, yeah, I wrote all of that. So you got to meet um, the late great. No, no. I okay. actually was connected to a, a friend of mine, Bill Stephanie. Okay. He was executive producer of the music soundtrack, and he's like, "Yo, I need you to write." Wow. So I was like, "Cool." That's wow. dope. That's cause, you know, Baby Kid's one of my favorite yeah. movies of all time. Right there. <laughs> but um, I okay. get. No, but but that was also the funny thing was when I was in the middle of my kind of transition out of out of hip hop, mm. people like Barry Weiss, mm. you know, they would say, "Hey." If you're ever done rapping, come work for my promotion department, do, right. do promo. Right. So when I went back to Def Jam, I wasn't Def Jam as an artist, I went there as running the CHR department. Mm. And when I left there, I started working records. And one of the right. first records I worked was Nori's Records. Wow. But also search like promotion, I think 80% of every hip hop record that it came out of a label, we worked. Right. Right. So now let me fast forward, boom. You work with Nas, you do this. Nas and Jay actually have this moment against each other. Mm -hmm. And Jay uses you as a punchline. He says, I know who I pay, God. Search like, like publishing. publishing. Yeah, he said, but you weren't getting paid, dog. You were getting fucked then. I know who I pay, dog. Search like publishing. So the story, the true story about that, the, the it's really crazy. Because I don't know. I don't know. No, it's a great yeah. story. Yeah. So I'm the head of CHR at Def Jam, and uh, they're about to put out that uh, Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. And Kareem, I think it was Kareem. It was either Kareem, Dame, and Jay, or Dame and Jay, come to my office and said, hey, we got to clear this sample, this dead president sample. Take care of us. I said, okay, no problem. Give me like 2500 but... Just know we're gonna have 25% of your record on the uh, publishing. Uh, and he was like, all right, cool. Uh, and that was it. He gave me a check for 2,500. I delivered it to Zamba. Uh, but if you look at the liner notes on Dead Presidents, Nas is one of the publishers. So I uh, say, yeah, that line can live as much as it lives, but Jay don't own a piece of Nas's catalog, but Nas owns a piece of Jay's catalog. Uh, and that's uh, a fact, though. Oh, uh, uh, we didn't know that. <laughs> We didn't, because we thought, like, when he said that, search, like, publishing, that, um, that he was meaning that, that Nas didn't have none of his publishing. Oh, you yeah, no, 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 no. Nas no, publishing. No, no, no. Yeah. But that's what he I have a 5%, right. yeah, I have a 5% admin fee, which, I, like, to this day, on those two albums, right. I just make sure, like, things, like, if Nas wants to do it, I just sign off. Right. That's it. Like, right. for me, like, when I think about being a production company, right, right. I think there's two trains of thought. Train one is, the artist ain't shit and the production company makes all the money, yeah. right? Or the second train is, the artist ain't shit and I'm gonna figure out how to jerk the artist. All right. That's most of how hip hop is run in their production companies. Right. I had a third tra train of thought, which right. was, I wasn't gonna be the Jew to take, take advantage of a black man. Right. So I don't need to get wealthy off Nas, and yeah. I don't. Right. My checks are very humble and I'm okay with that because they're gonna go for the rest of my life. Right. You know, when you think about streaming today, right? right? And you think about Illmatic. Yeah. Illmatic streams 400 million a year. Wow. To this day. I, I get my fair share. I don't get more than I deserve. I don't get less than I deserve. I get exactly what the contract says. Right. In fact, right. and I'll keep it a buck with all of y'all, right. 2007, I get a, a letter from Sony. They say, oh, we, we overpaid you. So you're not going to be getting a check. Mm. And my lawyer goes, oh, we're going to sue. And I said, we're not going to sue. Let it rock. We'll, we'll recoup. Eventually, we'll recoup. And we did. It took like 10 years. Because I don't give a fuck. 
What, what was I, the basis of them saying they overpaid they you? They said oh. that the artist royalty that I got paid was congruent with what Nas was supposed to get paid. So I essentially got Nas royalties, but Nas didn't, it wasn't minus off Nas's share. Right. They basically paid like it was like double dipping. Right. So they paid me exactly what they were paying Nas. But it wasn't accurate either, because the fact of the matter is, Nas was at like X amount of points and I was at three. So that was the only correction we told them. And after they made that correction, <clears throat> they fixed it, we kept it moving, it was done, one and done. But it took like 10 years for me to ever see another check. And again, I'm okay with that because to me, the ability to earn isn't about one thing, right? I, I learned a long time ago, it's not the strong who survives, it's the flexible, right? right? Yeah. So I would much rather fight Mike Tyson than a yogi. Because a yogi is going to bend me up in fucking ways that I'm never going to get fixed again. At least with Mike, I know when it's coming. I see the punch coming. I what know I'm going to get hurt. A yogi? Well, I don't know what that like is. Like yoga, like a yoga person. A yogi. A guy who's like, can bend and... Because if he... Like the guru. Oh, oh. You know, if he fucking <laughs> grabs you, like if a yogi <laughs> grabs you, bro, and he starts... He knows how to bend your body. Yo, <laughs> you might be fucked up for life. <laughs> At least if Mike hits you, you're going to be in pain. Right. Right. Let's be real clear. You're going to be in pain. But you're going to be able to recover. But if a, if a yogi bends you in a way, your body might never recover. So I say I would much rather be flexible. I'd much, I much rather be like water right. than be like a fucking wall. But did you receive like, like slack because of that? Because a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people took it as Search owned Nas Publishing. No, in fact, it was the exact opposite. Whenever that fucking verse came on in the right. club, I would get love because like, right. my name got mentioned. People right. didn't even realize what it meant. Right. They were like, oh shit, not Jay mentioned Search. That's fucking mm. crazy. Mm -hmm. So you sure you never got nothing bad, like even from like Nas camp or something? No, like, nah, Nas okay. and I get, we, it's yeah. all love all the time. Okay, that's beautiful. You know, even like if you think about all the times Nas has mentioned me on his records, right. there's like seven records where he mentions like our friendship or right. how I did him right. right. You know what I mean? Like he's never once said anything bad about me because he has no reason, because I treated him like a grown ass man. I treated him like a professional and right. I treated his music like a business. Right. So that he would never have to worry. Wow. And his daughter would never have to worry. His daughter and my daughter, same age. Right. They were born a month apart. His daughter and my daughter never have to worry. God damn it, make some noise for that. <laughs> so did you ever repair the beef with MC Hammer? Because um, you gave him the gas face. Yeah, no, no. We, we, gave, I've never, I, I've I never listened to the gas face again, and he's, his might have been the harshest gas face you gave out. Didn't yeah. you say well, somewhere like, that he put out a hit on you or something? Yeah. But I was, Elroy Cohen. Who the hell is Elroy Cohen? Leo. <laughs> that was Leo? Yeah, Elroy, <laughs> so Elroy. I said, why, why, does, why was it Elroy? Like, oh, no, nah, because we just wanted to make, we wanted to make fun of okay, Elroy Cohen. Just, 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 go ahead first. Yeah, let's go ahead first. first. Yeah, no, but here's the thing. So I've been in recovery now. It'll be 10 years, right? So one of the things that I'm coming up to in, in nine years of recovery is... Making amends. amends? Yeah. Right. And, you know... You got to make amends to him. Yeah. Can I say and, from the outside looking in? But... I, mean, I want you to continue to make your amends. But I looked at the, it again today, and I know I just said this earlier, but I want to just reiterate. I think his might have been the most harsh gas base because you put his glasses and the hammer. Yeah, there you was had a, a hammer thing. Then you had a guy walk through. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the two big MC. That was his co-host. <laughs> okay, his co sorry. Go ahead, but, but no, but the point is. Okay, what happened? Well, the point was that he dissed Run DMC, and and for me being a Queens kid, yes. and having Jam Master J may rest in peace put me in the game, mm. it was unforgivable. Like it was unforgivable, but it was an MC thing. Not only did you diss him, you asked the crew, what do we think about Hammer? <laughs> right. But that's not why But that's <laughs> like, not why like you Hammer, doubled down. Yeah, but that's <laughs> not why <laughs> Hammer put the hit out on us. Okay, all right, let's he take put it the, He, he put legit the, put out a hit? Yeah. He put the hit out on us. <laughs> because, he put yeah, yeah. the hit out on us because my old partner on the Cactus record, which was mm. a song on the album, Hammer's record was uh, Turn This Mother Out, right? Mm -hmm. Turn This Mother right. Out. Right. Dun, 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 right. Dun, 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 dun. right. I know Kind of like that. <laughs> right. I know all that. Go ahead. My, my old ramen partner said that the Cactus, our album, the Cactus turned Hammer's mother out. Oh. Right? But 
that, and let's be real clear about two things. We're lyricists right. first right. and always. Right. That was a dope fucking line, right. period. If I thought for one second, because right. I love my mother, right. if I thought for one second right. that someone would have misinterpreted that, I would have told that dude to take the line off the record. I'm not gonna lie, you was wrong. You know what I'm saying? The I'm not gonna lie. The cactus turned your mother out? No, no the cactus turned Hammer's mother out, but I didn't say it. Okay. And I, but again, I'm, because I'm the one who's in the front, <clears throat> because I'm the one, I took the heat. Right. And because it was my. And that line was in response to the Run DMC disc you're saying he yes, did? Yes. Right, it was right. not, and also because his album was trash. Right. right? Like, we didn't like his album. We were from New York. Yeah, but you there brought was, his mother involved. Trash That's to you guys, because uh, yeah. a lot of the country Everywhere was, was else. fucking with it. And yeah. again, for and us... And in retrospect, looking at Hammer now, his career is, is a pretty incredible career. Yeah. The... Yeah. He bounced where out. We, yeah. Where we were mm -hmm. was that there was New York and there was nothing else. Right. That once you left the tri-state... We, we, hey! we talk about this all the time. I'm trying Show to tell you. I'm trying to tell him this. Is it? <laughs> That's why there's a lot of animosity out there. It's fucking facts. It's facts. All right, all right, okay, and and right. when you're a kid from Queens, from Far Rockaway, who's never been on a plane before, uh, right. who's never been outside the state before, to have somebody come from someplace else that you don't even know about and diss Run DMC, right. and for me personally, Jay heard me run. So we had a reason. They diss Run DMC. Y'all niggas used to diss Run DMC. Right, so me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Whew. You're helping this guy out so much in our argument. No, and it's... Drink <laughs> but I... God, let, me, let me finish. And mind you, Hammer, that's the Bay Area. It's no joke. Yeah, but you saying at that time, like New York, for lack of a better term, looked at everybody else. Like, if you're not from New York... It's whack. That's the way the sentiment was put out there from New York. That's a fact. Was NWA fact. was it out at that time? NWA was different. Okay. Because NWA respected, you know, the beats that Dre had on that album right. were heavily influenced by Third Base. In mm. fact, when Ice Cube, you know, he said it on this show, when Ice Cube came to New York, right. he came to work with our old producer from The Cactus. Wow. Because that shit slapped. <clears throat> wow. Right? Even MC8 from Compton's Most Wanted. On their biggest record, one time gaffled them up. Uh. On the second verse, he said they got pulled over bumping the cactus. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it was different. And also Your, their that, message. That, and that first also, album just finished. went further than a lot message, of artists in New York. But their message was different. Right. Because right. we were about fuck the police. <clears throat> we were about the dope man. We were about that. We weren't about Dre saying some drop science, we drop English. We weren't about that. Mm. But we were about everything else. And they respected the production and Cube respected what we did, right? right. So LA was different. Right. And it's, again, it's iced tea. It's different. It was just cut different. Mm. The hip hop that Hammer was doing at the time was not indicative of what we thought was real hip hop. Right. Native Tongues, NWA, right. Queen Latifah, Eric B and Rakim. Right. You know, it, was, it, it wasn't, right? right? So, if I would have thought... It was a reflection of, like, Vanilla Ice type, type of thing. Yeah, well, it was I mean, worse. He, he, it was worse. He put on Vanilla it was Ice. Worse. Ice. It was worse than Vanilla Ice. It was MC worse. Hammer put on Vanilla Ice? Yeah, no, Vanilla Ice went and toured with, with Hammer. Yeah, so but, I mean, no, of... Vanilla Ice was worse than Hammer. Yeah. Because okay. at, least, at least Hammer's black. Right. Right. So, right. But Hammer, but came from, thought, he came from an authentic place, Hammer. Whether you like it or not, that's subjective. Right. We're going to let the, Cersei answer no, this. No, 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 it's not, no, 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 he's absolutely right. right. But the point was, the music wasn't where we were mm -hmm. in our hearts and in our minds. It wasn't where we were. And it pissed me off that I would listen to New York radio right. and not hear De La right. and not hear Tribe, but I'd hear MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice. Right. It's fucking crazy. Right. That's why we made Pop Goes the Weasel. Right. Because it's fucking crazy. Are you on Vanilla Ice, you have a clash in real life? I mean, no, I've never met the dude. But really? the point so is... So white or white crime does not happen. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> Yo, every, <laughs> fucking, every, every fucking mass shooting in this country is white on white crime. Like, Yo, be clear. No, white on white <laughs> rap. Didn't but, happen. yeah, no, white on white rap. No, but... Yeah, and the Beastie Boys never clash. Yeah, you know. No, we did. We did. Okay, uh, let's we just had, get to it. We had... We had, we had, we had, we had, we had <laughs> I'm 
so surprised you don't know this shit. No, like, no, I'm no. so... I, I, like, it's not about me knowing. You know what I mean? Come on, baby. You know what I mean? Um, no, so me and Mike D clashed um, early, early on before the Cactus album came out. I, um, I actually talked about this in the Beastie Boy book. Um, we clashed because I went to Mike D's house and I asked him I about like the Lower East Side. Yeah, this was. I feel like it's the yeah, end. this is on Barrow Street. Okay. When, okay. when uh, Russell moved on Barrow Street. Okay. So we went okay. over to. I went over to Mike's house and I said, you know, I need some help. Russell's, you know, shelving our record. It's we damn near finished, you know, and they had already left to go to Capitol. And he was giving me great advice. Like he was like, "Yo, you got to do this. You got to make sure this, this, and this." I was like, cool, thanks. And they already stars. This after No Sleep 2 Brooklyn. This is already, okay. Five million cool. no, out the gate. Right, yeah, cool. this solidified. And as I'm leaving the crib, he starts throwing shit at me, like laughing, like sponge things and thing. He's laughing. So I'm like... He's physically throwing shit yeah, at me? Yeah, like, he's, <laughs> like, he's, like he's like throwing fucking you know, coasters at me, right? Like, he's like, lay it up, lay it up. And I'm like, all right, you're fucking... You're a fucking dusthead. Right? Like, like, what the fuck are you doing? Right? Like, whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then later, like six months later, Spin Magazine did a, a piece on Paul's Boutique. Right. And we had already dropped Step Into the AM and Gas Face was already a heat bubble. And they asked him, what do you think about third base? And Mike D said in this article, he said, yeah, Search came to my house and he said some shit and I threw shit at him. And I'm like, oh, this motherfucker is about to fucking get it. So then we went back in, we did Sons of Third Base. on the first, That's the first cut on the Cactus album because oh. we wanted to let it known, like, yo, where the motherfuckers? Like, if you're going to like white people in hip-hop, right. like some motherfuckers that are from the block. Right. Like, really like Far some dudes that are really... Real. Right. For real. Like, right. fuck with Alcatraz, for right. real. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. that's, what, that's what we call... That's, yeah. that's what we call Far Rockaway, because it was only one way on and one way off. Yeah, yeah. Facts. Right? So, the impetus of that battle, that beef, was that. And since then, we've... We got cool. Like, right. I made peace with Yav before he died. Like, I had him on my syndicated radio show. Like, right. me and Mike are cool. And, and, you know, I did their book. And, you know, it, it's all love. But at the time, we felt like we had to be, like, the knights. Like, we had to be the white knight of hip-hop. We had to right. save the culture, right? Because right? we felt like nobody's helping, you know... Blah, 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 blah. Get on the radio. He was like a black you know what I'm guy. You know what I'm saying? It's black. This had to be a white guy who yeah, invented yeah, that. No, he yeah. was like, black guys wear that little bad guys wear yeah, black. Yeah, Must yeah. have been a white guy that started all that. <laughs> right, right, Make right, the right. gas face for right, those right. little white lies, right? Right, 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 right. So when we did Pop Goes the Weasel, it was a simple philosophy for us. We're going to take a huge fucking pop record, uh -huh. fucking sledgehammer, mm -hmm. and we're going to fucking diss pop radio, and we're going to diss everything they do. So if the record blows up and we go to pop radio, we can go in there and be like, yo, why aren't you playing this? Why aren't you playing that? Why aren't you? While we're here, you're going to play this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Right. It didn't work. Wow. We just became what we didn't want to be. And for me, my whole career was performing in front of black people. Right. And within six months, I got white guys stage diving off my fucking stage. Like, I was like, the fuck is this? Like, I don't even understand none of this. Right. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, what, what kind of fucking bizarro world did I just walk into, mm. right? Um, but for me, it's always been preserving black culture, and it's also been about representing, protecting artists. Mm. You know, it's always been that. Mm. You know, even, you know, and, and I'm going to pivot here, but even with, like, Timeless, with our podcast company, mm. like, we just did a whole series on Big Daddy Kane that's coming yeah. out. Kane owns all that content. I don't mm. own it. I licensed it to him for 15 years. Right. I paid him to do right. it. And we did it in immersive sound design. Right. I spent almost a year negotiating with Dolby Atmos to right. understand the, the schematics of how the ear pods work, how headphones work, so we could do 5.1 surround sound. Mm -hmm. So when you fuck with our, our podcast, you hear that shit. You hear fucking Kane in LG. You hear Kane mm. on the block in Brooklyn. You hear when they're doing the karate kicks watching the fucking Kung Fu movies on 42nd. Mm. Like, I wanted his story, Kane's story, to be more than the oratory. Okay. Like, I wanted you to be and understand the environment that he came from. Oh. What's a new artist? I'm talking about, when I say new, I mean new, 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 mm -hmm. new, new, new artist. Yeah. That you fuck with. Maybe we're not signed, but that you, you, you listen to and appreciate and enjoy. Right now, 
Probably the, the biggest artist I fuck with is this kid out of Philly named O.T. The Real. I fucking love this dude. He's a fucking monster. Really? There's another kid out of Atlanta that I fuck with heavy. A uh, 21-year-old kid named Surf. He put out three mixtapes called Bad Human, Badder Human, and Baddest Human. Mm. They put out a new EP called Sustaining Injury. That kid is fucking hard body. I love this is, that kid. This is lyrics? Lyrics, but also his understanding of who he is at 21 years old and his storytelling. Um, I, fu I fuck with him heavy. Um, you think lyricism is dead? No, nah, definitely not. I fuck with, you know what, who I just listened to and I love is uh, Rob Markman. I listen, I listen to Born to Write and I just listened to his new album. It's crazy. Yeah, no, Rob is dope. You know what I'm saying? And like, Come on, boy, Rob. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's like a lot of new artists that I fuck with. I'm not... Let's make some noise for Rob Markman. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not... I'm a rapper turned journalist here, journalist turned rapper. Let's yeah, and, and like, yeah. I'm not one of these dudes. I'll never be one of these dudes that gets stuck in an era. You know, Nielsen just did a report that said 98% of men and women over 30 stop listening to new music. Only 2%. And after 30, you only go back to the artists that you love. Right? right. I'm not that dude. I'm just not that dude. You know, I, I love I'm 50, new... 50-50. Well, no, because you're yeah. still immersed. But when you think about becoming 30, 31, 32, and you're not in the music business, what does that become, right? It becomes responsibilities, it becomes jobs, it becomes family, it becomes children, it becomes debt. It becomes, you know, so you're not digging in the crates like you once did. Right. You're not going to Dad Piff anymore. You're yeah. not going to SoundCloud. You're not going to Bandcamp. Right. You're taking your kids to fucking day camp. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not no, fucking I, I with other you shit. Hip, I heard you talk about Clubhouse earlier. Yeah. You on Clubhouse? Yeah, I got the largest fucking club in the fucking okay, Clubhouse. Okay, okay. <laughs> we have, um, it's called the New Money Moguls. Okay. And we have um, a, a meeting every Tuesday called Problem Solvers. Oh. It's with some of the greatest minds you've ever met. Leontine, who is the only woman to ever run Jordan Brand. Dante Simpson, who did Eastbat TV, who mm. did um, the Lil Nas X for Roblox, and did Travis Scott. He did those two deals for Fortnite. Wow. Uh, he's on there. Mark Byers, former GM of mm. Motown, who handles the Marvin Gaye estate, who handles all the consulting for Burner Boy. He's in there. Aria Wright, 20-year veteran at Diageo, mm. knows distribution backwards and forwards. So we have about five to 600 people every week. And we solve them, we problem solve. What I'm tired of in Clubhouse, and I see this all the time, is people want to talk, but they don't want to do shit. Everybody's an expert. But it's okay to be an expert. But be an expert in health. Like, right. I, I, I break down my life to this point like this. In my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, and now my 50s, all I do is learn. I continue to learn. My 20s, all I did was learn. I didn't earn, I didn't do anything else. I, I, I learned, I just studied, learned, studied, learned. 30s, I learned, I earned, but I churned. If you was fucking whack, if you were not benefiting my life, you were fucking out of here. Right. You'd get the Christmas card and you'd get the Hanukkah card and you'd get the New Year's, but you're done. Mm -hmm. 40s, I was learn, churn, and earn. I made more money in my 40s than I ever did my whole life. But now in my 50s, I churn, I learn, I earn, and I return. So problem solving is about, you got a business, What's your business situation? Oh, this is your business situation? Oh, well, that person's right here. He's in this room. Give him back. Bring him up. Right. Bring him up. Boom. So we do three things in Problem Solvers. One is we connect you with people. Period. Oh, you got a clothing company? You need distribution? Here's my man. He got six fucking plants in China. Done. Yeah. Oh, you need Amazon? My man's an expert in Amazon. Done. Oh, you need radio promotion? My man does this. Done. So that's one. Two, we check you out, we evaluate, and then we point out what you're doing wrong. Oh, you got a problem with social media, fix that. You got a problem with this, fix that. Or three, damn, I like what you do. I like your move, I like the way you're moving. We're gonna invest in you. Come meet us after the meeting. And then we have a meeting and our advisory board comes together and we give you paper. Mm. And we either become a partner with you, short term, mid term, or long term. And that's what we do on Clubhouse. Yeah. Let me ask you something, sir. Something me at EFN started this podcast once, one, we said we wanted to interview legends. We wanted to interview people such as yourself that have been in the game that, you know, sometimes, you know, when, this is a young man's game. So sometimes we, we get overlooked. That's one thing. But not only that, we wanted to uh, show love and admire to the people that came before us with this hip-hop union. 
we really want to form a real hip hop union where a person has 10 years or more and put this game in and maybe he didn't, you know, make it Jay-Z status. He didn't make it to a... Like a SAG, like SAG. Yeah, but SAG won't I feel, come. But I feel that's the, 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 the easiest base it to yes. Can yes. I ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind? Yeah, no problem. What's the purpose? In, purpose 30, is, in one sentence, what's the purpose? Probably we should take care of our own. Because I feel like, like hip hop, like, you know, one thing about you, um, when I look at you in all honesty and respect, I, I see you, before I see you as a, as, as a white person, I look at you as a hip hop person. And to me, hip hop is a race in itself. Fact. If I would have to pick first, I would say I'm hip hop first. Mm -hmm. And then I'm black and Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. But hip hop, because it's just, and I feel like there's a lot of people that's like me that identify that. Now, if you came in this game, and it's just like, if you look at these old documentaries, you look at this, that's why I was so glad you cleared up the, 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 the publishing. But you look at the, the, it was this, this, this image of these people taking advantage of these kids and just eating off of them for the rest of their life. And them never being able, like I just seen, um, I think OJ the Juice Man say that he has to die 10 years before he could even, his kids could even, he has to be dead 10 years before his kids could even think about owning the rights to his first So the album. short term is creating an opportunity for artists, both young and new, to establish some sort of funding where they are protected short, midterm, and long term. Mm -hmm. So the, the process, if I'm hearing you correctly, for the sake of clarity. No, but I think you need well, to let me finish because the thing oh, about sorry, it is this. Yeah. So we might have two different visions. I want to no, tell no, you no, my... No, no, no. The thing about it is this is you being from Far Rock, Far Rock, for people that know, it's probably one of the hardest... Toughest. Oh, and shout out to another kid, Bobby J from Rockaway. That kid is a fucking monster. Oh, okay, Sorry, pardon, yeah, no problem. Pardon. One of the hardest places in Queens. But the thing about that is, most people that will make it from Far Rock, most people that will get this opportunity, they're seeing a number in their face, and they're not thinking about calling a lawyer. They're not thinking about calling a manager. They're thinking about, like what you said, get them out of the projects. Like, you all, I think yeah. you said, nah, I said it's that. Always, always like, it's always what I lovingly refer to as and, homeboy management. Right, and you know, you got from, you know, Queensbridge to 40 projects to all these different places that these people have these 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 talents and when they make it to a certain level, uh, it's people who, 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 who does take advantage, right? But, but look, let's remember why we started the conversation. We started yes. because there was pioneers getting sick without having health insurance. Right. This is That's it. how we started yes. the conversation. Yes. So what I was saying, like a SAG that gives access to insurance, right. to health insurance, right. maybe right. starts to create some kind of retirement fund. Right. But, it, but I say SAG because SAG is, is as much as you put into it is what right. you kind of get, get out of it. it. Right. You right. know, because not so, everybody's going to be, you know, so is, what, yeah, yeah, so yeah. is what Rocky Bucano's doing at Hip Hop Museum with putting the top floor Shout for Shout out to the Universal cool Hip Hop Herc. Museum. Coca Rock, giving them permanent and housing. That's, that's the yeah, one they don't have to the one in the Bronx. In the Bronx. In the Bronx. Okay, I'm okay, an ambassador okay, for them. Yeah, right? okay, okay. So, okay. so okay. what Rocky's doing is, is similar. Right. Is he's okay. creating lower income housing for people there permanently, right? So it's that. Oh. He's also creating housing for Theodore, oh. for Coca Rock, so they mm. never have to pay rent ever again oh. for him and his families, right? That's but, fire. We need but, to hear more about this. Yeah. But, the year but then we need to fucking have Rocky on him. But the point is, but the point is, didn't Wendy Day do that with the Rap Coalition? Didn't she do that in trying to take care of, you know, cash money? Trying to take in care a sense, of yeah. Them, yeah. right? Yeah, but, but we but, want to take care of the whole culture. Part okay. of but what happened? What happened to Wendy Day? What happened? She definitely got sidelined. Right. Not only get sidelined, she got silenced, and then uh -huh. the people that were supposed to take care of her didn't take care of her. Uh -huh. Right? So a union only works. If the people that are buying into the union continue to support the union, right? right? right. So the reason why SAG after works is, right. yeah, you can be in the union, cost you a hundred grand, right? right? So right. it's counting for the masses yeah, to right, be. Exactly yeah, but that's right. like back in the days. Right. Right. Like back so, in the days, the unions and and the, and the, no, 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 the no, cement then, industry didn't work. But there's no, a couple no, of my people that I know that's from you know a certain area. Right, they the, came the, and the they made these union work. Right, to make the union work. You know what I mean? work. And and here's the other part of it. But but and I don't like to say but the other part of it that is the vital part of it, right? Is that 
if you take an artist like Jay Z and he said, I'm charging motherfuckers for what they did to the Cold Crush, right? Right. That line is only as powerful as what he actually gives back to the Cold Crush, right? Yes. So we were talking about Cold Crush. We were talking right. about, right? Mm -hmm. So on my podcast, the end of episode one with Kane, Kane talks about the most influential MC in his life. You're going to bug out because we, we've been talking about it. Is Grandmaster Cass. Cass. Right? right. So in right. the end of the episode one of the podcast, he starts to recite Kaz lyrics from a Park Jam that he heard on a fourth generation cassette tape like it was written yesterday. Right. So we interviewed Kaz. And I said, Kaz, do you remember these lyrics? And he's like, shit, those are, that's what I call classics. Mm -hmm. And he starts rhyming them. Right. And I lean back and I said, fuck, what if something happens to Kaz? Right. Them, them lyrics disappear. We got to make a record. We got to make a record now. And it's got to end the first episode. So we did, right? And we gave it to him. Publishing, royalties, everything. Gave it to him. 100% his. So the that's first, an NFT. What the fuck he just said. Mm -hmm. And so May, May 9th, what? NFT auction for that record. So. That's the union. What? That's the union. It doesn't have to be organized. Mm. It has to be curated and, ex and executed. Right. And it doesn't need to be 10 people in a room to argue about what you want and right. you want. And what, it's and what just you deserve, fucking yeah. do it. Right. It's fucking do it. Problem solver. That's why I did problem solver. You and I, I can like sit that. here. You, he can smoke weed all day. You can drink all day. Right. We can fucking philosophize all day. It's do the it. action. The action. Right. Do it. Right. Right. right? So here's my, here's my small contribution to that right. right it's one thing but it's the first record Kaz ever owned a hundred percent of for right. life right. I don't own it right. I gave it to him and the record fucking is a bop right. that shit ain't some corny fucking right. no that shit is fucking a fucking smash right. play it you got it, Londa? Turn that shit okay. up. Turn that shit up. All right. Turn that shit up. Turn that shit up. Turn that shit up. And we're talking to Cass to come on Jim Sham soon. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. We're going to hook that you know up what I'm saying? immediately. So, so to me, that's the answer. You know, right. it, you, I think we do a lot of philosophizing in hip-hop, right? We, we grew up with the idea of how do we create something that is ideas into curation, right? Got a great director, Gil Green, here, right? He takes well, ideas, well, right? His family right here. Right. <laughs> You know, Gil will take words and create amazing images on screen, right? And I love you, brother. Right. But it, he can't do what he does if he sits for six months on a fucking idea because then they're going to move forward. Right. It's curation, execution, direction, done. Bang, 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 bang. Right? Right. So do it. Don't worry. Don't think about it. Do it. Right. What, how do you execute? How do you curate? How do you do it? Just do it. You just do it. So you're saying for each individual to do their part... Yeah. As best as they can. Because what, obviously what we're talking about, why can't we have a SAG? Why can't we yeah. have a union? Why? Because hip-hop can't have something that big? Can't have something that organized? No, they can. Are we but really boxing? Because boxing no, is that We brutal. don't have the resources or... Boxing is that brutal. Of course you do. That's to bullshit. Extent, to no, an extent. That's bullshit. To an extent. Uh, like we, do you know when, the SAG, you know when, like you know when SAG started? No, tell me. 1905. You know who the first person in SAG was? Charlie Chaplin. One of one. Yo. It starts with one. Wow. You don't need ten. You need one. All right, so Nori, you're one. I'm in. <laughs> Let's go. I'll I'm be the, two. I'll be the I'm two. Big. I'll and be then the there's three. Big. Let's go. Yeah. Take three percent of everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, but, 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 you, but you... Everybody has to be in SAG here. In our SAG. In the Drink Champ SAG. Yeah. That, to me is, that to me is the essence of what hip-hop truly is, right? When you think of the tenets of hip-hop, right? It's not about drip. It's not about... Jewelry. It's not about that. It's peace, unity, love, and having fun. When the culture of the when the culture started, right? And when, when we not right now, Serge. I'm gonna be honest. No, I don't know if you got YouTube. But it's not about that no more. But, that's, <laughs> but here's the thing. But that's not hip hop. Just, right. but, but just because it's not about that right now that's doesn't mean it's also not part of hip hop. Let's not act no, no, no. like hip hop ain't no, never no, had no, violence no, no. and no, ignorance. No, no, you're missing a point. Been ignorant. You're missing a point. Okay, my bad. No, it's okay, God. Okay. It's this. It's. Yes, the park jams were violent. Yes, there was a lot of challenges. Yes, there was all of that. However, what we're seeing today is rap music and artists right. and right. social media. Right. That is separate. Right. And if you just automatically lob it in and say, oh, that's hip hop, right. then you're not really focusing on the true tenets of what brought us all to, right. this, that's table, not culture. to this table. Right? I agree. And that's the, that's the key of it. It's culture. That is not culture. 
That is a reaction yeah. and, and, and a part of who they are and where they live and what they experience and who they and are I, around. One million sip, agree with you. But the thing about it is, the same way somebody in Far Rockaway, Queens, and what's the Edgeman? What is it? Um, Edge Call? Edgeman Edge Edge Project, Project, Edge Project. Hamlet, Red Firm. Same Shout way out to a Red Firm Project. The Red Firm yep. can, can film. It's the same person a, a kid in Fort Greene can film. But it's the same place a, a person in Tacoma, Washington, Seattle, Washington can do film the same thing. Have a couple of people around them right. that can actually blow up from their own house. Okay. There's no OGs so, involved so, with this. So there's then, no, so then, there's nobody helping this kid out. And this kid continue to make it. He's no way, shape, form, or fashion listening to us. And yeah. that's and that's eventually. I don't agree with that. No, no, but no, no, no. I agree with him too. I don't agree with that. So listen, listen. Uh, wait, wait. No, go ahead. It's your show. No, 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 no. What part did you don't agree? Like, I just feel I feel the disconnect happened. There was a disconnect that was no. that OG okay, stopped being you, OGs. I said this a long time. Okay. I've said this plenty of times. Yeah. Of course, they're not going to look up to OGs anymore because what's there to look up to? Right, but if a kid, this is what I'm trying to say. I think you misunderstood my point, like how you just said to me. What I'm saying is, right now, we used to have to go to a wild pitch. We have to go to a. a, a, a That's pitch. industry. Yeah, well, That's I mean, gatekeepers. That's different stuff. And they still have to do that. If they want to get yeah, a big, a big yeah. bag, they want, to get, they want to do that. And here's the bottom line. No, as as much on SoundCloud. They don't got no AR. And there's it's a record label that's out there that's willing to pay him and say, fuck it. We'll give you everything, just keep doing what the fuck you're doing because record labels don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right. Back then, it was artist curation. There was artist development. Mm -hmm. You actually tried to, at least. Right now, they're like, these guys are just out there doing whatever. Right. If whatever's working, let's just do it because their numbers, it's all, what's that, what they keep calling it, algorithms. Right, but that's so, industry shit and versus we're talking either culture or industry yeah. or no, we're just let marrying let me, the let two. Let me ask you this, because yeah. we talked about the White Rapper Show right. before. Yeah, I like you the White You were rapper. on the White yeah, Rapper Show. Yeah, I like show. the White Rapper Show. But when you did the White Rapper yeah. Show and the White Rappers came, mm. you sat down, you had one drink and you bounced. Why? No, I thought this is punk. I yeah, thought y'all got that's exactly right. I, like, I that's thought right. So you didn't, so you didn't, so you didn't, because we just did a white rapper reunion on my podcast, oh, right? We had all that. And they all asked me the same thing. They said, damn, did y'all hate us? Right. And we're like, no, we didn't hate you. Right. We, we, we appreciated where you were from, but when Nori was on the top of his building, <laughs> he thought he was being fucking punked. He sat down and bounced out. Like, he didn't have, he didn't have a, an opinion right. about who you are or what you right. are. Right. He could give two shits. Right. He walked in, he thought there was some candy camera shit going on, and he mashed right. out. Right. That is not him personally. Right. He don't personally feel bad, right? You right. don't feel personally bad. Right. 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 And now you look at that and now, if you look back at the show, I love the show. Right, you I love, love the show because you see, you see actually, the whole thing. At, at first, I was, I was, uh, I think of Sasha. Mm -hmm. I think it was you. Mm -hmm. I think it was a couple of y'all. Just mm -hmm. come, yo, come hang out. You know, we got this white rapper show. Whatever. When I came in, and it was just a couple of co corny moments where I looked and I was like, "Ah, right, this might be." This might be how Ash and Kutcher set people up. They got searching them for you. <laughs> like, so I'm thinking like this, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just bounce. When when I look back at the whole episode and the whole season in this entirety, I wish y'all would have told me like, yo, no, no. So I wasn't there. Yeah. So no, here's the thing. Show. I love the show. What I loved about Nori's episode was, <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to be anywhere near them. Do you know why? <laughs> because it would have been just about me and him for about three hours, <laughs> right, right? Right, right? But right. they wanted the engagement. It was the mm. same thing with Joel Santana when they went to meet Joel's mm. up and and John Brown gave him the fucking burnt card, like right. he made a fake card and like oh. handed him this fucking cardboard card. Right. Joel did the same thing. Sat down, <laughs> ate his food, fucking looked at his watch, and mashed. <laughs> right. There was no, you know, because we wanted original. Yeah, we original. wanted, we wanted right. to see what was gonna happen. Organic and these right. organic. Right. And now that you look back, right, right. and you see Nori's reaction, because right. right. Nori literally went. All right, we <laughs> <laughs> was fucking, I, right? so I mean, he slapped the table. He was like, "Fuck it, I'm gone. I'm <laughs> in, done. Strike the set. We're done. It's out of here, right?" Yo, and the best part about that was it was Nori being Nori. Yeah, yeah. What, I and, and I want to, and I, and I'm so glad I'm here with you because I, I really have to share this with you. When I took you on the road mm. on promo, I every single mm. radio station said the same thing after you left the mm. studio. Mm. Is he interested in doing radio? Does he want to host a radio show? Every single my car one. Right now, yeah, Every That's single nice one. Way. Because right. he I was doing amazing it. on yeah, radio. Yeah. I have never 
I don't like to use finite words. You'll, you'll see that I've, I'm working on my wordplay. I don't like to use finite words, but I can use it in front of him. Yeah. I've never yeah. had an artist go on the yeah. road yeah. where program directors, yeah. OMs, GMs, yeah. were listening and then came back and said, is he interested in the career in radio? <laughs> but he liked it. Hot 97 <laughs> offers you the morning show. Yeah, yes, I know. And it's why this transition to this yeah. And why you yeah, and this, he saw, I know, he saw you saw the vision. Yeah, I remember saw, when you uh, called me <laughs> yeah. and told me, yo, yeah. and I didn't, yo, I'll be, I'll keep it a buck. I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> I didn't know what you were what, talking the, about, but the, you said, podcast, yo, I'm gonna, right, the podcast, and I'm like, what the fuck is a podcast? <laughs> right, right. Who the fuck cares about this right. shit? You're a fucking genius. You're a fucking, and, and, and I have my company and my wife and I. Because right. it's not me. There's no more searchlight. The right. right. name of the company is 4MC. It's the right. name of my wife and my children. Right. Because it's about this, right? right? And it's about what you guys built for right. me. Right. So what I did in the streets of Far Rockaway, you did here for me. Right. You returned your energy to give me an opportunity. Us, yeah. 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 Let, me say, let me say one thing, right? Because I do use Google now. At first when we started this, <laughs> I didn't use Google. But when I Googled you, it was so enlightening and so fun because the first two words of your name is MC. Always. I'll never drop that. So when you hit Google and then you type in MC, there's only a couple of other people who, who pop up. Do you know who those people are? Probably MC Hammer. No? Yes. Okay, MC Hammer. Okay. Who's the other person who would probably MC probably... Light? No, probably not Light. Light didn't come up immediately. No, MC, I would probably see, I would probably say, <laughs> you know what, the, the name that pops in my head is probably, and it's not that, it's probably MC Ren, but it's probably not Ren. It was MC Shan. MC wow. Shan. Queens. Yo, and, and I, I don't know, because you know Google's a um, tool. Yo, yeah, no, it's an the person right, right, who right. you are. But you, you know what, Google's one of the biased. things, no, it's, it's biased, biased. It's, it's biased. biased. It's, it's definitely biased. That's, that's trust the word I'm looking for. But let me tell you something, and, and, and I want to talk about this for a second, because right. Queensbridge deserves all its flowers. God damn it, let's get All its flowers. Uh -huh. But in the podcast we did with Kane, mm. we started to talk, because we interviewed all the people that he came up with, mm. that were, you know, obviously still with us. All right. right. And we started to talk about Lafayette Gardens in Brooklyn, LG. LG. Yeah. Here's the list of producers and artists that came out of LG. Okay. Easy Mo B. Mm. Wow. Witch Doctor, who did mm. Ramen is Fundamental, who did Biggie, all right? Mr. C, AB Money from Rapping is Fundamental. It can be argued, and obviously Kane spent a lot of time there, right. but it can be argued. It's not right or wrong, but it can be argued that LG is probably just as dope as Queensbridge. Wow, I never looked at it like that. Now, I'm not saying it's factual, because there's also a point of it where after 88, 90, 91, 92, you had the surgeons of Queensbridge with Nas. Right. Like a generation. You know, right, with, with Hot Day, with Hot Day, right. with Mob Deep, and, and so on right. and so forth. But you look at LG. And Marley Marley, let's not forget Marley Marley. No, 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 and Marley, but, okay. but the thing about Marley is Marley technically didn't live in Queensbridge, which I found out. He had a house near Queensbridge. He moved to Queensbridge to produce. But paid in fall, he did admit on his, yes. he paid, he, he right. did no, that no, no, no. Absolutely. actual Absolutely. Queensbridge Bridge. Right. projects. So it's interesting to me because even with me being a Forrest Gump of hip hop, yeah. I didn't connect that. Right. Cool V is from LG. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you're talking Ms. about Cool Mark, V. Homie, Cool V. Yeah, DJ Cool V. Better known to y'all as Come as Vaughn Lee, or you know what I'm saying? Like, Called so, the you know, right. Yeah. So it could be argued. And that's the fun that I'm having with my podcast. Mm. Is that I'm now looking at it, oh shit, I should do a whole podcast. Well, I'm gonna just on let LG. you know you own a guy who's affiliated to Queensbridge Park. You're not gonna win this argument on this podcast. No, so yo, first of all, yo, yo, Queensbridge wins that argument. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> brother, I'm from Far Rockaway. Of course, this shit ain't yeah, yeah, never yeah. gonna fucking yo, win I, that argument. I, I, how fucking how proud was you to see? That um, nah, I was on the Grammy uh, recently. Like uh, I'm out chilling, you know. I don't. I've never watched the Grammys. They never invited me. What the fuck, I want to do that. Right. Like I'm a hater. Right. Like I'm a hater when it comes to shit like that. You don't invite me to shit. Fuck it. Like, no, I think your shit is whack. If you don't invite me to shit, I don't give a fuck. That's just who I am. But um, 
So I've never, I've, I've never got invited to Grammy. I, even my hottest, like I think they invited me and took it back. I was like, oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so, so I never had that dream, right? But I've never made, I've made that level, but not. I felt like, and then recently, we're just sitting there. They're like, are you going to watch the Grammys? I'm like, no. But I wake up the next day and they're like, yo, he won. I'm at a, right. a restaurant. We're in uh, Billy's. We order all the crab legs. I drink all the champagne. Give me all the champagne I got. And I do a blog and everybody. And it was like, because, you know, I'm not from Queensbridge. I'm from Left Rack City. But I got a lot of love Left for Left Rack or I Rack? I, well, yeah, you know, the same thing. But, I, you know, but um, I got a lot of love. And I, I just wanted to show them just that love. I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to interpret it and say, we're bringing this Grammy back to Left Rack in Queensbridge because that's not what Nas, Nas is Queensbridge. All day. So I did it. I big up Zoe's place. I big up my, bo- right. my boy Left's place. And I mean, all, I could see all of them reposted and just being happy and rejoicing. And it just made me feel so proud because that's what we is. Like in Queens, like sometimes we're so territorial that we'll be like, you know, I'm from Left Rack, but I'm just from Section 1. I'm from Queensbridge, but I'm just from Vernon Boulevard. Mm-hmm. I'm from Far Rock, but I'm just from, yo, know, Red and, Fern. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm from right. 40 Project. I'm, I'm, I'm from South Jamaica, but I'm just from Baisley. Right. Like, and I feel like this was this moment where just yeah. all of us Queens rejoiced. Yeah, so how, how good did you feel from being in the so beginning? The how? trifecta for me, it, it's threefold for me coming here. Mm. One is to be here with you. Two is Thank you. understanding that Nas not only won a Grammy, but got into the Library of Congress. Right, yep. Double <clears throat> Wong Tondra, Bonga Dao. But three is making the left on this block and seeing MF Doom on the corner. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, because, you know, I know Zev Love X yeah, since he was 14 years old. Yeah, let's talk about MF Doom. Yeah, yeah, yeah when I'm Googling, well, MF Doom, right up there. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know MF Doom. I know Zev Love X. Wow. I know Daniel Dumoulin. I know wow. Sub Rock, may he rest in peace. I know the family, you know what I mean? Like, right. that, those were my people, you know? That's just not, it's not just some artist. You God know, bless like when you I for changing the subject. Yeah, no, I'm, no. I'm staying on the subject. Yeah. But when MF Doom, they pronounced him dead and it was on Halloween, like, wasn't, like, a, a lot of people in hip-hop at first was like, is this a, like, because, listen, I remember one time people were saying MF Doom was in six places at one time. Mm-hmm. As if there was other people that was yeah, doing other that. people were performing wearing Can you the mask. Speak on? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, again, I don't know Doom. Right. I know Zev Love X. Wow. Because you know, when I was putting out my little independent records before Third Base, mm-hmm. I was hanging out in Long Beach, Long Island, um, which was you know, hop, skip, and a jump from Far Rockaway. Right. I met my homeboy Ahmed. I met Otis, and then I met Doom and Heem, and I told them, I said, Yo, when I get on, you get on. Period. Right. And a conversation. Um, he always wanted to wear the mask? No, no, no. no, 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 no this is no, way no. later when he he, he put on the mask after his brother died. Yeah. Okay. After his brother died, it was um, it was one of those moments we'll where I don't think... We're going to finish this Grammy. Make sure we go back to the Grammy and yeah. and all that. But, but yeah, but... but, but the way you, you jumped talk about, in, No, no, but, but I'm yeah. going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come back to the Grammys and I'll That's explain good. why. So, um, you know, so seeing Doom at, at, the, um, at the funeral and him mashing out, <clears> and then this year... Nas went in the Grammy, watching, watching the Grammys for the first time, seeing Doom on the, on the screen. Mm-hmm. Oh. But then the credits rolled, and executive producer Fatima Robinson. And Fatima and I used to dance together with Stretch and Shake as oh, yeah. the IOU dancers in, 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 in the LQ. Oh. So I'm, and my man Jeff Robinson wins for her. And that's my dude. Like, that's my, like... I go back to when Alicia performed for my, my non-for-profit, Rock and Wrap It Up, at the World Trade Tower a year before it went down. Wow. You know what I mean? So I'm seeing all this, and I'm crying my eyes out. Happy, sad, you know, a million emotions going through me because it's that, it's that moment. It's Nas, it's Doom, it's Fatima, it's Jeff. It's all of our people finally being where they're supposed to be, getting what they're supposed to get. You know, like, I don't know, you know, if they were going to show Doom. Right. And they did. You know, when, when Doom died, not only on, but when they made, made the announcement New Year's Eve, 
The one thing that amazed me was not only the amount of rappers that showed love, but it was... You knew he died prior to them announcing that? No, 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 no. Okay, all right. The way but, just, no, they, no, the family kept it secret. So they kept yeah. it secret. Okay. And yeah. I think they did, they think they did the right thing yeah. because they put his affairs in order. Doom knew... The one thing I know is that Doom knew he was going to die six months before. Like, he, they mm. knew he was going to die. Um, so they put his affairs in order. And um, to see, like... Tom York from Radiohead, give him his flowers. Beth Gibbons from Portishead, give him his flowers. Johnny Marr from The Smiths, yeah, give him his flowers. Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish, give him his flowers. Like, yo, it was fucking crazy. Along with all the other MCs. And murals with, around the world being made. Murals yeah. around the world. I got yeah. pictures in my, from France, London, right. trains. The, the fucking government of France... Japan that doesn't allow murals to run on trains. Let the Doom murals run. Mm -hmm. Amsterdam. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like the impact that he made, yeah. man, was fucking crazy. And you don't expect that. And, you know, talking about amends and talking about being in recovery, because that's one of the things that we're also doing in our podcast company is me and um, my homegirl, Kyle Eustace from Hip Hop DX. We have a podcast called Breaking Anonymity, which is about uh, the road to redemption and recovery. Right, because I think there's a stigma. People think like, "Oh, you can't have fun. You can't be around people right. smoking weed when you're a, you're an addict. You can't be around this." No, it's about breaking that down mm -hmm. and understanding like you can go to a, a program and get help because there's people that can help you. You know what I mean? And and so we have like amazing artists, Danny Boy from House of Pain, Frank Gallagher from the Talking Heads. Like we have these amazing slain talking about their their road to recovery, and. One of the things that I talked about in my, my amends is there's called direct amends and indirect amends, right? There's a homeboy of mine here I got to make amends with before I leave, right? So, so there's direct amends, but then there's indirect. And I always thought, man, I can make amends with, with Subra. I can make amends with Doom. So now I got to make indirect amends. So the things that I take responsibility for, for the distance in our relationship, now I gotta fix with the next man or the next woman, somebody else, right? Yeah. Because that's my responsibility. All right. That's my responsibility before they put me in the dirt. Right. Yes, yeah. So the Grammys, and, and the beautiful part about the Grammys, you know, again, and going back to it, is that it seemed to me for the first time in hip hop history, that the album of the year was balanced. Alchemist and Freddie Gibbs, like, that fucking album is crazy. Mm -hmm. Alchemist is a monster, he deserved yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Like, and you talk about, you know, Griselda, mm -hmm. like you talk about Benny, you talk about West Side Gun, right. you talk about Bodie James, right. like, motherfuckers are monsters, they're getting fucking Grammy nominations. Yeah. Like, yo, right. their movement it's, is crazy. It's, right. it's balanced. Right. You know, we got this balance, we got this, finally we got a little bit of equilibrium. You know, it makes me wanna vote. I'm a voter. I don't vote. I'm, I'm like, Nori, I'm fuck you. You ain't going to do shit for Grammy me. Grammy voter for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Grammy yeah. Vote, yeah. You know, but <laughs> like, this is another, this is another yeah, election right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But you know, but that's, you know, it's, right. it's, it's what it is. And, and I feel like there's balance, finally. Because there's people like us who are in this range, who have the experience, who now can say to the Grammys and, and Naris, like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Blank, don't, let's, let's look at this. And how we look at it is we vote on it. Right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, Wait, we didn't, you still didn't finish telling us about MC Hammer's hit on you. Yeah. Yeah, that's for the book. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about that. No, and, and so the thing, to say, but, but, the hit didn't work. No, it definitely didn't work. But <laughs> it goes back also to men's. Like, you know, so I didn't even say the line. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to eventually have to make amends with the man, right? Yeah. Even though he put a hit out on me, yeah. right? Like, I have to make amends. And where I come from, and I'm not being well. braggadocious when I say this, because even though I grew up in a very traditional Jewish household, I didn't grow up in that household. I grew up in Redfern Project. Right. I grew up in Hamill. I grew up, I grew up on the street. Like, where we come from, somebody puts a hit out on you, you wipe out their family. Right. You don't wipe out the dude. You wipe out his mom, his sister, his brother, his cousin, his uncle. You leave no bloodline, you know, because the other dudes that I grew up with on the other side of the street in Inwood and in Rosdale, Colombo crime family, Gambino crime family, like, and that's how they moved, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not who I am right. today. 
And I felt that way for a long time. It ate up at, you know, it ate me a long time. Like, I got to see this dude. Eventually, I'm going to see this dude. Da, da, da. I was in a room with him recently on Clubhouse, and somebody said to me, yo, you, this is the perfect time. And I'm like, no, it's not. With who? I'm sorry? With Hammer. With well, Hammer. Yeah. Okay. But it, I was like, I'm not, that's, it's not the right time. Like, this is not the right time. The time to do it is when we can sit down, he and I, and I can tell him what my responsibility is, what my role is, right? right? Even though I didn't say the line, even though the other dude in my group never, never ever talked about it, he just kind of kept it moving, right? So I'm the one, because you know I'm the guy that in hip hop people see as the front man, even though it was a group, it was all three of us, right? Right? You know what I mean? So that's my responsibility. So I'll make that amend when I'm ready, because the part of it that the that seventh and eighth step is when you're willing. I'm not. I'm almost there. I'm not completely willing to forget that because it was, it was fucking crazy. It was serious. It was real serious. Right. You know, it wasn't any fucking game. It was fucking serious. Um, but I know that that's my, my responsibility. You know, when we talked about it on, on the Breaking Anonymity podcast, we talked about, like, Love your the plugs. responsibility. Love his plugs. <laughs> Love his plugs. No, but, no, no, but it's also, but it's also yeah, what it I is. It, but it's also what it, it is man. because... That's what we talked about. It's not a plug just for the sake of right. doing no, it. No, no, no. Exactly. You know I mean? that, that's weird. So now, as we talk about, because, you know, this is, you know, drink chance. We love cocaine stories here, right? We just love it, right? It's just, it's just, it's he's, just he's like, when you did cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, now you're I, sober, but when I, you I did walk, cocaine. I walked in Leo Cohn's office one day. Leo is one of my favorite executives. I don't, I don't know right. if Leo it did anybody else wrong, but well, he, my, they, he, they did something. Yeah, he got in gas. No, no, no. We just, we just called him I, Elroy Cohen. I mean, we were just fucking with him. Listen, I love... Leo, oh, let like, me ask my question. Yeah, please, you, you please, know, please. So I walk in Leo Call's office one day, and he's sitting there, and he has uh, it's a picture on his wall. He has on, on his nose, on his nose, like a tissue. The, the picture or him? <laughs> the pic, the picture has a tissue in his nose. So I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, that was a great night. I'm like, yo, <laughs> is this the time you on roll with Run DMC? And like, he's like, no. I was sniffing cocaine so much my shit just blows. And I was like, oh my God, I love the story. Right. Man. No, so, yeah, I was not a, I was not a cocaine dude. <laughs> okay. My my so, what, my, what? my 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 my, <laughs> my DOC, which is the slang term for drug of choice in the room, huh. is what you're smoking right there. But mm -hmm. you can't be in recovery for butt. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. You, you haven't seen half You can be recovered for anything. So here's the thing. It wasn't <laughs> the fact that I smoked it. It was how I behaved after I smoked it. Mm. And it was the fact that what I did as a man... It was definitely smoking dust. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, mixing yeah, it with yeah, dust. Yeah, That's yeah, a whole different high. That was my time. That was a dirty <laughs> in a different time. It was one time. It was one time. Yeah, no, it was gone. Be honest. No, no. And and the thing was... He blamed it on the butt. Fuck you. I didn't blame shit on the butt. And I damn sure didn't blame it on the fucking dust. I was happy as fuck. Like, I was happy as fuck. I fucking served some dude so bad he tried to kill me with a fucking... 25 <laughs> at a park jam. Oh, oh man. Okay. So hold up. Go <laughs> ahead. Continue. <laughs> so it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was a combination of a lot of things that made me realize that my so addiction. Never, never once. <laughs> Come on. You never. Yeah. No. I once. Right, I did let's it talk once. About that and it was, once. Let's yo, go. no. <laughs> you don't want to. It's a fucking terrible story. He, he I did it once. You slipped coke no, down it's my not a No, it, because it's boring. It's gonna. Right. You're gonna fucking. It's gonna make the editing flaw. Yo, I okay. fucking snorted a line. It tasted terrible in the back of my throat. I was done. It was that's it. Wow. I didn't think that. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that was the end of the story. That's it. That's what I'm saying. It's fucking terrible. Oh, but shit. Sure. But with but, right, with well, my, but is, with my but drug is, of choice, uh -huh. when I got to a place where I realized it was a problem, mm. it wasn't that it was the weed itself. It was the behavior mm. that I was Attached masking. To the, right. Okay. So what I learned in recovery was that after I got rid of my DOC is I had to start looking at who I was and started to peel back the onion of my authentic self. So I started to like look at my character defects. I started looking at the things that made me a fucked up individual. I started to have to look at the things like, cause yo, I would smoke and then I was fucking a zombie. Like I was a zombie to my children. I was a zombie to my wife. I was a zombie in life. I was a bad businessman. I was a bad partner. I was a, I was- All a, from weed. 
or from weed. Because what Some it did was, it didn't yeah, yeah. allow me, the weed didn't allow me gotta, to deal with my, my personal issues. Right. It didn't allow it was a crutch. me. It was totally a crutch. It was a but totally it was also, a bad time. But it was, I'm going to be honest. What years we talking about? They had cocaine in your shit. I'm just throwing it out there. You probably didn't know. You probably didn't know. I'm just being honest. They laced your shit. I stopped using. I stopped using. I stopped using. I stopped using. This my, is not my, called using, my, my, my clean, my clean I got this from a doctor. My clean a doctor? <laughs> yes. I Dude, alcohol is legal. You don't alcohol think that, is legal. And you don't think it's worse than weed, bro. So, yeah. Great, 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 and let's be really great. clear. It is worse and, than and I want to explain something great, great. For, the, for the sake of this. Absolutely. I'm not saying that marijuana is bad. Right. If you it's can smoke it casually, right. that's great. Right, right. I just think you should smoke and fucking stay smoking. I think it says in the scriptures... The Most High gave us all of these plants on the planet Earth for you to use. Mm. I'm saying that the word is not in there is he didn't give us all these plants for you to abuse. abuse right, and right. I abused them because I... You took as a mess tab or something. You took a mess tab. <laughs> Come on, no, let's no, just keep it real. None of that. No, no, and I'm not trying to bring down You're the rumor. You're taking of what your experience yeah, was. And yeah, and yeah. just weed. It was. You never seen half bake. <laughs> of course I saw half bake, bro. But... <laughs> For like, me, you ain't in here. But for me, brother, for the weed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. I, Yo, he I, smoked I, weed in the crack pipe. Let's leave him alone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Let the search get away with this. But you know what? In those times, they was lacing y'all shit. In those Dude, times? In those times, Dude, yeah, those they was lacing I'm not talking. Shit. You're, you're so, going back to 85. I'm talking about I was smoking in 2010. Yeah, I'm talking about I, I was smoking in 2011. Yo, dude, I was I had that good, good. Everywhere I went, I yeah. had good, good. You were okay. talking about, like, you, I think you said something about somebody who never bought weed. I never bought weed in my life. Oh, oh. I never bought Sleepy weed. I never bought oh, weed in my life. I had homeboys <laughs> bring me weed all oh. the time. Right. But what I was dealing with in my personal life, my professional life, I had to get high because I couldn't deal with the pain that I was dealing with. I didn't want to look at it. I didn't want to examine it. I didn't want to fuck with it, right? So when I got into the program, I started to break shit down. And the first four years, like I was still a, a piece program, of shit. NA? NA, yeah. Okay. You know, the first you know, four you know, years, Scott I was still- and, and Steve LaBelle has a program where they got the same shit to get you off of cocaine. <laughs> what the shit fuck? like that, <laughs> but put you on marijuana. <laughs> Yeah, but you on It's TV called TV. NA, not we. No, no, dead serious. I'm not lying. <laughs> fellas, yeah. fellas, it's you're missing just saying him, the it, point. For him. Yes. What it is no, for him. This is you, you with lace, man. I'm not going to get hooked on Tyler on Silver NA, and that's his issue. There's no way you he was, no, he was not. He was not doing no crazy shit on marijuana. I wanted to hear the crazy shit you did on marijuana. It's not about the crazy shit I did on marijuana. You're not hearing what I'm saying. No. I'm definitely not. I'm so sorry. It's Let's okay. Marijuana doesn't no. let him hear shit. No, and that's okay because look, I'm not, and I think the thing is what you're hearing is I'm not telling you that marijuana is bad. Marijuana is great. Because what I'm picturing is Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. And this is, I've never seen. Well, that's seen. a terrible reference, man. What? That's not a terrible reference. It's actually a, well, you know, Robert Downey Jr. did some fucked up shit. He did on a cocaine. lot of fucked up shit. Cocaine. Search, I've what? never heard Search doing fucked up shit. I just what? never heard of it. I've never heard of it, bro. I've researched you. Tell our guests. You're not in the bad people <laughs> section. No, but it's not because it wasn't about what I did in the streets. Mm -hmm. It's what it it did to me. Mm -hmm. And I was faced, I was faced with a choice. And when I first looked at it, I thought like you, mm -hmm. like I'm like, oh, motherfuckers are crazy. You know, this is all bullshit. I remember the first time I ever went to a meeting. The first meeting I ever went to, there was a dude sitting across from me. Looked like a fucking racist. I'm from Queens. He's fucking big white dude. He's in a cut. Got a big ass beard named Rich. Big Rich. Definitely a truck driver. Dude, and the first thing I'm, and the first thing I'm in my fucking in this meeting saying is like, yo, this dude's gonna open up his mouth and I'm gonna punch him in his fucking mouth. I got my little jig on me, I'm gonna fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting. But he's the nicest guy in the world. Here no, to help you. worst, oh, shit. worst. He opened up his mouth and he told my story. Mm. He shared his experience, strength, and hope and it was my fucking story. And a dude and a human being that I would have no connection with in the street. He don't listen to what I listen to. He don't move how I move. He don't like what I like. 
but his experience was my experience. And it broke me. I fucking cried like a baby for 45 minutes in that meeting. I couldn't even speak. And I realized, yo, I got a fucking problem. But the problem ain't that. I'm the problem. But it took me four years of not doing that to get to the point where, okay, I got to fucking look at myself real quick. I got to look at myself. And I got to really, really look at what, like, my wife sees, my children see. You know how hard it is to make amends to your kids? Mm Mm-hmm. To sit in front of them and say, this is why I was a fucking horrible father. And have your children tell you, yeah, you're a fuck, you were a fucked up person. And, for, and it's not about forgiveness. And that's the other thing people don't realize. It's not about you saying, I forgive you. I've made amends to people that people said, okay, you're still a piece of shit. Fuck you. And I said, thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for allowing me to tell you my role. And that's it. And I keep it moving. I so it's not about down. that. It's not about that. I it's seen not that about eastbound that. and down when the dude came to him and he said, you know, I want to apologize to you for fucking your sister. <laughs> Come, <laughs> Come on, man. Right. No, Sean no, McBride. This is the real shit. No, this no, no. But you know what? But, but, and, and, yeah, and, my, my, and he goes, and, what? Yeah. Fucking my sister? He's like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, shit. Maybe I fucked your wife, too. Like, uh, and the guy didn't forgive him. Trust me. My men were not that serious. He didn't forgive him? I mean, would the guy forgive you? I mean, I'm on the board on you. Would the do say? Would you forgive him a candle if he said? So, you know, so for me, so again, so for me, and and again, it, for me, it was really a very simple process. Right? As a cannabis avocultural advocate, <laughs> I'm gonna take a piss while you can't buy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me finish. This. Go, 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 go. I figure. Yes, sir. You need to get back into cannabis. No, not gonna happen. Get back into it. You need to get back into cannabis it's not happen. some way. Never. No, it's very safe. <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you the only way I'll get back into cannabis is, is me and my partners own a spot. Exactly. You don't see right. what, that's what I'm saying. Sky but you storage, don't ever get high on you your don't own see, supply, I said brother. it earlier, but Sky You don't get high on your own supply, brother. You don't, you no, can't. You could, CBD, you never had a CBD no, massage? See, no, because again, another, it's, it's, all, it's, all about, it's all about understanding that one is too many and a thousand is never okay, enough. Okay, CBD doesn't get you high. But I've had a CBD so the, so the argument, so the argu- and I've had this argument. It don't get but, you high, but it gets but you. But the argument, the, the argument is, is it's like I'll give you a perfect example. Mm-hmm. Moscato. I've heard this argument all the time. Moscato is only like less than one percent alcohol. It's a yeah. sparkling drink, right? You still get drunk kids, on Moscato. Kids. Right. So is that for an alcoholic a gateway to this, to that, to that, to that? Right. So for me, I don't. I can't talk for anybody else. For me. I don't fuck with none of it because for me, I'm happy with where I am today. Mm. I fucking feel so fucking good. Yeah, make some noise. Leave fucking feel right. good about where I'm today. <laughs> and yo, the only thing I don't feel good about is I'm a fat fuck, so I gotta lose this weight. But that's also a part of my process, right? Mm. Because now I've, you know, do I like donuts? Yeah, but I gotta get rid of them. I gotta get. Why the... are you seeing donuts over no, there? No, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> Well, F- FN's over there, so there might be a donut. Oh, there might be a donut or two. But no, like, but, 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 but people, but people, you know. Fuck me up right now. But like, people, where is the donut? Are you ready for the munchies? Are you ready for munchies? No, but you know what? But people, but people, I think, make this invalid, inaccurate assumption. Right. Dude, I'm around all of y'all, y'all all smoking. I'm not triggered. You know why? Because it ain't for me. Right. It's like when dudes go to a bar and they don't drink. Why? It ain't for them. Right. Dude, I agree with you. And I want to be really clear. Baccarat crystal clear on this. All right? I heard that. I'm glad you can smoke and feel good about it. I'm glad everybody in here mm. that smokes and puffs trees feel good about it. Mm. It don't work for me. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm on the fucking noise for that. And that, that's real. That's real. That's good shit. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop. No, I think you gotta go with the gold. Are we I think you gotta go with the gold. Come on, bro. Take a shot. I took three Take the gold, and then after that, the platinum. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna be honest. Can I you ask you a question? Yeah, yes, can I ask yes, you a question? Yes, you can. All right. So this is what I, I want to ask you about um, about CNN, right? So right. after the war report drops, <clears throat> you do four hundred fifty thousand. Nobody expected you to do none of that, right? Yep. Nobody did know that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. war report. Yeah. Did you ever feel like there was going to be a part of you 
that was missing if you went solo? Was there ever a part of you that was like, damn, when my man went away and all of that, I shouldn't do a Nori album, I shouldn't continue making music, I should hold off and wait, like the way like MOP might have done or the way other people might have done? Was there ever part of that you that said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta fall back and hold off? No. Nah. <laughs> no, that was a decisive nah. answer. Nah, um, because it was like, oh shit, Peter Rosenberg. That's Peter. You cool, Peter? Love Peter. All right, cool. That's my dude. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. Another great Jew in hip hop, by the way. All right. Let's, let's see if he picks up. I don't know what he just sent me. I don't know. Let's see if he picks up. Did somebody call Peter and tell him I was here? Does that be look, fucked up? Look, 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 look. So guess <laughs> we here with MC Search. <laughs> Yo, 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 he's yo. sleeping and shit. Yeah, you look like you're jerking off. Come on, you're embarrassing me right now. Hey, yo, you're embarrassing yo, me right now. Yo, yo, you know, yo, you know what Sean Peck got says, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men shouldn't fucking FaceTime each other. That yeah, shit, yeah, that's yeah. a violation. Yeah, yeah, Peter, yeah, what yeah, up, man? Yeah, yeah. How you, Pete? Yes, hey, man, what's going on with you? Yeah. We doing drink chance. drink chance. Hold on. Shout out to Rick's dad. You gotta hold the phone. Come on, sir. You gotta hold the phone, sir. Yeah, yeah, put it to the, put it to the, no, 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 wait. Talk to him, talk to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't even know what the fuck. Yeah, Yo, yeah, this yeah. is some weird shit. What up, yeah. Pete? How are you? Sir, she don't FaceTime with men like this. No, yeah, yeah. no, it's definitely a bad look. Yeah, I'll go, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. go taco. Hey, man. Did you guys start yet? Yeah, yeah. we've been, we've we're been We're in the talk, middle of it. Yo, yeah. we're at like hour three already, yeah, I think. Yeah. We're coming up on the third hour. <laughs> So, you know, you know, uh, and, and Kane is coming to see you on the 27th. I know you're happy about that. Yeah, yeah, we got you. And I'm looking forward to it, man. So, what's up, man? Uh, Chilling. I just want you to feel awkward now and have to sit in this. Office. Nah, fuck that. Yeah, here you go. Here's Nori. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, shit. Nori, when you get a minute, watch the clip I sent you. I just wanted to make sure you thought it was funny and that I wasn't talking shit. All right, cool. Because you, you know I got jokes back, so it's okay. Don't worry, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Hey yo, hey yo. Hey, yo um, I'm oh, sorry. Chag Sameach Pesach, brother. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm about to be down with the Jewish Illuminati too. Hey, yo, be there. That's a funny story. That's a funny the story. Jewish Illuminati. Jewish Illuminati. <laughs> when I was at, when I was at, when I was at, when I was doing radio in Detroit, uh -huh. I get a call to the newsroom. Yo, sir, Sean is on the phone. Oh, Sean. And I'm like, oh, uh, Sean Poe? Sean Poe? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Sean, that's orthodox, right? Wait, wait, wait. So he, he just got, he was just maybe, it was about a year and a half. So I'm like, oh, we got to record this. It's got to be live so for the morning show. So stop me for one second? Yes, absolutely. Let me just ask you one thing. You can ask me whatever you want. Because you say you are nibbliated. You are out of this world. Nibbliated? You know, this is a word I made up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a word I made up. I, and I'm using it. It does not affect you. Smelling this. Nope. Drinking that. Nope. Can you open up a bottle of, of champagne? Of course. You can open it. Yeah. I want to feel, feel like you're from yeah. Wayne. Yeah. But listen, don't fuck this up. He's a new Mr. Lee. Brother, can I just tell you? I know. Yo, come on, man. Can you open up a bottle of champagne? I'm a fucking Jew. Let's see if you still clear. got it. Still got when it. When the last time you opened them up, that, that's a five hundred dollar bottle of champagne. About that's 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 three hundred. Yeah, I was gonna say. Put it in the hat. Put it in the hat. But let's see. And this is hip hop owned too. Hip hop owned. We just sold it. But let's see if you can, you can do it. But um, I see the tab. Hold on. Okay, yeah. I gotta, yeah. I gotta yeah. get the when tab. When the last time you opened a bottle of champagne? Oh boy. Um, is it eighty-eight? Probably my kids. My kids bar bar mitzvah. Oh okay. So oh, two thousand fourteen. Okay. Two thousand fourteen. Okay. Okay. Two thousand fourteen. Okay. You still think you got the skills? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, we gonna, we gonna test you out right now. Because as you know, <laughs> the skills are <laughs> well, that when that, you open up a bottle of champagne. All right. The key is. It's the Jewish secret? No. There's no. Just the champagne secret. <laughs> it's a champagne Unless secret. Unless you want to give me a saber and I can do a saber stuff. No, I don't know. Well, don't you're going to cut, you're gonna cut the joint? No, 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 no. If you have a saber, yeah, I can yeah, do it yeah. that way. No, no, no. So the key is, that. right? I'm going to hold it to the thumb. Okay. Right? Because you don't know if the air is coming this way. Right? right? Uh huh. So let's get that off. That's what she said. Uh huh. That's what she said. <laughs> right? Okay. Let's do it. Huh? A little tight. That's what she said. Okay, now, okay. the trick is you want to twist and let the air out. Oh. Oh. He still got it! Yo, he still got it! I'm not going to lie! Yo, he might embarrass a lot of people in here. Yo, listen, hold on. Did you hear that? The air? It wasn't even what he popped, it was the air. 
That's perfect ear. That is Wait, a, Kira, you know, Kira, you know, Kira, I'm not going to lie to you. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Fucking Did you hear that? <laughs> it's like it was that shit the is a Somali ear. That's what the guys who come in this... A Somali? A Somali I know, I know. A Somali I know. Age. <laughs> 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 the motherfuckers doing that, bitch? I didn't mean the guys in Somalia. I mean, you know, you know, he, holy shit, that was hard. That, that was, was really hard. Good. That was hard. No, Serge, let me just say something, man. <laughs> you are a legend. When we started the show like this, this is where our purpose was. Was, you know, we figured that these new guys... They have their other platforms. You make these new records, and it's great. And we want to support them, too. I don't want to feel like a Dream Champs don't support the new generation. We do right. support the new generation. It's our focus is on the generation that came before us, the generation that laid it down prior to us, and we want to continue to do that. When we have artists like you, it's such an honor and such a pleasure and such a just a, a moment for us. We're like, like the shit you were saying just now, I was just falling back into fan mode. Like, and I'm sitting back, I'm like, because some of this shit I knew and then some of it I Googled and then some of it I was like, I don't even, I just want to figure it out right now. And it's such a beautiful moment for me. I know it's such a beautiful moment for him. Um, and we want to thank you in your face. We want to, you know, Tell you how much we appreciate for what you're doing because there's a lot of people who had your positions, had your moments, had your time. I could have said, you know what, I did it. I did my part. Let me get out of here. Let me take my money and let me get the fuck, right. the fuck away. Fuck out of Dodge. Let me get out of here. But well, you it's can. One of, you know, one of the things, and, and I will say this, you yes. know, one of the things, and, and it, I feel the same way. This is a mm -hmm. fanboy moment for me too because mm -hmm. I'm such a fan of yours. Not only because... Thank you. Not only because I love being on the road with you, and right, I love right, right, right. being a small part of a great record getting right. on the radio right. um, and doing that, but mm -hmm. what you guys have built right. is what I strive for. Right. You know, even with my Search Says podcast, even right. with my individual podcast, like right. I study what you do in your interviews, right. so that when I do my interviews, right. I know I'm I'm ready for it. Like I'm trying to be the Howard Stern of hip hop. Like right, I want right. to fucking hit right. people over the head with shit right. where they go. Oh shit! Like uh, when I hit Chris Rock over the head with knowing that he had he was on the spectrum of Aspergers. Mm, wow. He didn't even you know, like you know what I mean like wow. you know what I mean like you know, or talking to like Kamal Bell about growing up in Oakland and knowing shit about him that, you know, talking to mm. fucking Roger Clemens about the wow. blood blister on in '86 wow. and wow. how it was bullshit and that you know what I'm saying like right. so like I, I like to get it but that is you returning what right. I gave to y'all. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And that's why I'm here. That's why I, no, I no, sat down. No, that's why I wanted to be a part of this. No, but you so much of a legend, man. Like, when you look at, you know... But I did want to say this real quick. I'm sorry, because okay. you said something about... Because I gotta keep bigging no, you up. No, 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 stop no, no, me no, no. bigging you up. Yeah, stop letting me I'm, not bigging really, you up. No, no, no. like, I, I, I see when, how when, humble you are, but when we will unhumble you today. When we build Nouveau, when we build Nouveau, right? One of the things... That's right. The liquor company, that's right. When we build Nouveau... My philosophy was real simple when I went to the company. I said, I want to create my department to help artists and do integrations so that they don't have recruitment on their videos. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pay for 100% of their videos and only take 10% wow. of the wow. time. Dope. Right? Wow. I remember that. In three years, 2008 to 2011. I'm going to pissed now. It's my, my people. We gave Atlantic Records $2.6 million. We gave Def Jam $3 million. We gave Capital. We gave Sony. We gave RCA millions of dollars. And I'm not saying we didn't make it, because we did. Right. We sold Nouveau for 2011 to Diageo for $376 million in four years. I'm about accelerating opportunity. But my philosophy was simple. Give to the artists. Make sure that this company benefits artists first and foremost and then everything else will come back right you know it's just like what the gods say it's born to born right that that tenth degree that 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 knowledge has to come back so what you guys are doing for people like me and the reason i was able to make my joint venture with sony 
is this is an example. Well, we're all building off each other's backs. Right. And that's the point that we've kind of been talking about regurgitating the whole time, right? over, over and over and over. Again. over. Yeah. And it's also, you know, goes back to your union. It goes back to all the people that are here that make right. this show possible. Your engineer, the sound guys, the guys that, that, you know, compromise their time. Right. You know, the one most valuable commodity we have beyond money is time. We don't Absolutely. ever get it back. This, you know, whatever time it is now, because I don't want to date it, because it might be evergreen, this content. Right. The time we have now, we, we never get it back. Mm -hmm. So let's manufacture our time to equate to greatness. Right. You know what I mean? Because everything else is bullshit. Everything else don't mean shit. You know what I mean? We can drink all the wine that we want. We can drink all, we can smoke all the weed we want. But if we don't maximize our time and doing what you're doing and doing what, you know, what the fuck is it for? No, it's true. It's true. It's true. Let, let me ask you something real quick about Searchlight. Because I swear to God that I've seen Searchlight forever. Did you sell the company? Mm -mm. I closed it. The only thing that exists now is Searchlight Publishing. Because there's just too much. I mean, we got, obviously we got Nas, you know, that we administer. But we also work with Ashley Rose, who's an amazing writer. She wrote for 7th Streeter, Chris Brown, Bodie James, who's down with Griselda. Did the Versace tape, you know, he's down with that. Kevo the Great, who wrote for like a gang of artists in, in Atlanta. Right. A man, Big Said, who's down here working with Earn and working with City Girls and all that shit. So the only thing that exists is Searchlight, Searchlight Publishing. The publishing. Everything else I closed. And when I had my own personal awakening, I said to my wife, I said, you know, it can't be about me anymore. I got amazing kids, you're amazing. And if I would have spent a tenth of my time listening to my wife, I would have been a hundred times more successful. Mm. So I said to my wife, take everything. She, my wife owns the, the royalties, owns the publishing, owns the everything. And if I want to do something in business, I talk to Chantel first. I can't make any decisions Chantel, anymore. Chantel, a black woman? Yep, black and Puerto Rican. Oh, get right, it right. Cool, cool. cool. <laughs> From Elmhurst, get it right. <laughs> She's you, black woman. <laughs> And she don't and she don't smoke and she don't smoke and she don't drink. You see I'm, what's going with on with Gary Owens, Gary Owens. Yeah, come my, on, my, come on, my, yeah, my, 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 you see Gary Owens right yeah, now? Yeah, they they yeah. asked you, is Gary Owens still invited to the barbecue? I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm with I'm with my with my bride 33 years. No, right? right. So um so when I created 4MC and I made it about the kids and I made it about my wife. It's because that is that is that is my sun, my my right. earth, and my moon. Mm. And if I would have, because and and I know he got it in him. Mm. It's just something about blacks and Puerto Ricans that got it in him. My mm. wife would, she could sit down with you for five minutes, five minutes. Mm. She'll walk away from the table and say, "Don't fuck with him," right. or yeah. the opposite, "Fuck with him." Right. And I used to say this: right. "Come on, you don't know." She what had she's good instincts. About. Right. right. No, not Beyond good. That. Beyond that. Right. Beyond that. And if I would have just spent a tenth of my time with her saying, you're right, I would have been a hundred times more successful. A hundred times. So now, the last five years of my company with 4MC has been 50 times more successful than it's ever been in the 25 years prior. Mm. Because I look at her and I say, what do you think? Mm. And she says, give me all the information. She says to me, and I'll start talking, and she goes, Michael, land the plane. <laughs> land the plane. And then she says, I want to meet him. And if those two things don't happen, deals go, it just, just doesn't happen. Beautiful. And day, I know man. you got it too. Make some noise for your <laughs> So what's next? What's next? What's next for motherfucker? Well, you know, what's next, honestly, is Timeless Podcast Company. Right. You know, I, I believe... It's a complete network? It's a joint venture that we did with Sony and The Orchard. Nice. Okay. It is a entire organization. Mm. Um, I believe that the, the titles and the colloquialisms that we put on our culture is fucked up mm. because we are not classic, we are not old school, we're not legend, we are mm -hmm. timeless. Mm -hmm. right. So I call everything I do timeless. Right. Timeless podcast company, timeless um, distribution and, and the Thomas Podcast Company is about telling our stories but telling it in a way that will live forever. Right. And one of my favorite things to listen to in the archives, radio archives, is Orson Welles when he did the broadcast in 1940. War of the World. War of the World. Theater of the Mind. And I wanted to do that times 100. 
And when I heard Cain's story and he started blessing me, because that's really what Cain did. I mean, he blessed me with nine episodes of just shit he never talked about. I said, it can't be just this. I, I want to hear the fucking leaves rustling on fucking on his block. I want to hear, yo, he grew up across the street from Divine Sounds. I talked to Disco Richie about what people do for money. And, and we built the sound design all around that. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear it, and even created at the show at the beginning of our show, Immersive Sound Design, we have a trademarked registered sound effect that was built in a studio, my man Epic and Sugar Studios, that was built to encapsulate everything you're gonna hear, everything that you hear. So everything that we do in Timeless Podcast is based on immersive sound design. Mm. And we have amazing nice. partners. And, and you know, obviously, so there's, there's that. It's called Did I Ever Tell You the One About Podcast? Did I Ever Tell You About Big Daddy Kane? It um, premieres April 26th. Mm. We got Search Says Podcast, which is just an interview, mm. you know, kicking it with people. Mm. We have the Breaking Anonymity podcast, which is coming in the summer. We have Line for Line, which you're going to love. It's two MCs talking about how much they influenced each other. So the first season is DMC and Chuck D. Wow. Here's, here's yeah. a little, and here's a little right. treat for you. I'm going I'm to I'm bang your head mm. with this one. Mm. Get a little more sauce. I'm going to bang <laughs> your head. The original name of Run DMC, travel. the original name. Right. Daryl wasn't supposed to be in a group. DMC was not supposed to be in the group. It was just Joey, Joey and Jay. May he rest in peace, right? Joey said, hey, I know you got some rhymes. Come to the studio. Just come to the studio and kick the rhymes. And they did, they did suck MCs, right? He's saying that to DMC. Right. right. <clears throat> Russell says to Joey, if this doesn't work out, we're going to call the group Run The MC because it'll be Run. But after Daryl kicked his verse, Russell was so happy they called it Run DMC mm. for Daryl McDaniels. Uh, and wow. he blessed us on our podcast. We're the first people that he, that, that he tells the whole story. That's what Timeless is about, man. It's making right. this shit evergreen so that when people look back, and, and we're going to talk to the newer artists and we're going to talk to them and, you know, we have a, another great show that we're lining up and all of that. But the Timeless Podcast Company is about this. It's about making our stories evergreen, making right. them last forever. And, and Kane is the first iteration of that. God damn, make some noise for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to lie. Serge, you was my man. You actually um, one of the people that... Um, Sit down and you tell your story, and I can co sign it all the way through. Uh, you are absolutely right. I, um, I met you through Akinelli. I had my TOI record and my couple of records, and you brought me on tour. We went on tour. We had a beautiful time. And I want to thank you to your face as a man because um, there's a lot of things that you did in hip hop that you didn't have to do, and you did it. And just in case you ever not felt like you got your flowers or you get your flowers. That's, that's, we, we invented, well, we didn't invent the actual statement of giving the flowers. We, we, it, we made it we famous did. in hip hop. You cemented it. In we hip hop. Because, we sorry. Because, because I could just remember, like, and it was so beautiful like today and yesterday. I just spent those two days just watching all your videos. And I'm like, yo, my man, rhythm. You got, you got more rhythm than me on the low. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like, when I looked, I said, I don't know if I could have did this certain shit that you was doing. <laughs> I was like, no, like, no, like, you know, like, you know, like, he was really dancing. Like, and back then, you had to dance. Yo, yo, let me tell you, you something. You can't just he be said dancing. He was a backup dancer. Yo, you had to be a dancer, too. Crazy shit Word. was my first tour that we ever went on was with Too Short. Right? Right, right. Because, you know, we had the West Coast and East Coast locked up, but we had to do the Midwest. Right. So, Russell's telling me, oh, there's this dude Too Short. And I'm like... Oh, born a Mac, you know, I, I know about I know I know about short dog. So we go and our first show is I don't know somewhere blank middle middle of the country, somewhere. Right. We get on stage and typical New Yorker. Everybody knows me. Everybody knows third base, right? You're thinking this, of course, because right. I'm from New York. Fuck right. everybody else, right? right. right? <laughs> Yo, that's a facto, B. I don't give a fuck. That's a facto. <laughs> Facto, there was New York, and then the rest of the world was a Search black fucking argument for three years. Yo, yo, this show, go ahead, yo, facto, You're right, go ahead, go facto. Search, go so search. we're in the middle of nowhere, right? It's just, it's just mountains, and and, and we're doing this show. And too short, love, it's all love. Yo, hey, player, blah 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 blah, player, player. Yo, what up, man? I right, go do your thing, man. I'm gonna be on stage and watch you do your thing. 
Yo, I'm talking about the crowd was, they were, they were like, you know, they were polite. You know, they were polite. And they kind of knew our records for, you know, from BET and your own TV record. Yo, I went out there dancing my ass off. I'm grabbing girls, I'm dancing, me and I'm, and crowd starts getting with us. So, oh, everybody, you know, all the homeboys and out, right, right. Crowd, we leave, we're like, ah, too short. Crowd's going crazy even before he touches the stage. Too short walked across the stage and went, bitch! Ah! <laughs> and that's all he did for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and annihilated us. <laughs> annihilated us. We got back to the bus. There was like three people there. Yeah. And his bus it couldn't even leave. So I'm like, oh, he must have this city on lock. We'll yeah. go to the next one. It was Oklahoma. Uh. Same shit. Oklahoma, I'm dancing. I mean, I'm now I'm doing the worm. I'm trying to get my... <laughs> yo, I'm fucking... I'm like, yo, it's snake. Bomb, I'm just... You know, oh, like, God, I'm just... I'm, I'm trying to fucking... He put out all the Yo, I put out all the stuff. Yeah. Hop through my leg, kid and play style. Like, I'm fucking yeah. amped, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bitch! Ah! I, that's when I knew. So there was two times when I knew that New York wasn't shit. Uh, that was A hey and man. B. And no, it's, no, far. facto, go facto. And I love you, you to death, far. but it is what it is. But the second was was when we went on the on the road with Public Enemy. So it's Public Enemy, Digital Underground, Queen Latifah, Native Tongues. Right? We get down south. And I used to love. What I used to love is I used to love to go to side of stage and see the lineup because mm -hmm. it would usually be. Ba 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 ba, or Kane, then Kane and Public Enemy, or Third Base Public Enemy. We get down south, Baton Rouge. Ba 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 ba, Third Base Public Enemy, two live crew. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, there's got to be a fucking problem here. And I go to Chuck. I said, Chuck, they he, fucked up the lineup. Understood. They fucked up the lineup. He's like, no, no, they didn't. I said, yeah, they did, man. You're fucking Public Enemy. Ugh. He's like, watch. Yep. And I said, watch what? Fucking two live crew. They got one record. He said, search. Shut up and watch. Yeah. And we got to the side of the stage. We mm -hmm. perform. Crowd goes crazy. Public Enemy performs. Crowd goes crazy. And then all of a sudden, the cops come in. And then all of a sudden, Two Live Crew hits the stage. Yep. And Luke says, hey, they ain't going to let us say our words, so you're going to say them. Hey, we want some pause. Hey. And, the and they didn't have to say one Word. I never seen a dance like this in my life. The upper row, they were doing like fucking musical chairs around chairs. Woo! Fucking 10,000 people. Hey! Yo. Yo. Right? So they didn't even do, they didn't even do the record. They didn't even do me so horny. They didn't even do that. <laughs> then he goes, they don't want to say this word, so, oh, do the, do the bro. I'm like, what the fuck are these records? <laughs> Yo, these motherfuckers did an hour of records I ain't never heard before. Before they got to me so horny. And I just, and I, I feel a tap on my shoulder. And he, I turn around, it's, and it's Chuck. And he says, you always let the hottest group close. So, fast forward, we're in Europe. We're doing Public Enemy Third Base World Tour. We have the number one record in, in the country, Gas Face. At the time... The Queen of England was trying to pass a law called the poll tax, P-O-L-L -L, tax. And basically what it said was Parliament was trying to say, okay, every person in every household has to pay a flat tax of 2,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a blue collar worker and you got mom, dad, two kids, 10,000 pounds, 40,000 a year pounds, it's fine. It's not a right. big deal. But in the Trinity neighborhoods and Brixton and South London, yo, they had 12, 15 people living under a roof. Right. Caribbean families. They couldn't afford that fucking, yo, that's, that's, they don't, they're not even bringing that home. Right. It was civil unrest. I mean, it was like Black Lives Matter before Black Lives Matter. I mean, ash, fucking barrels burning in the streets, no poll tax, all of that. We go to Brixton Academy, which is like the old, one of the oldest theaters in London, in Brixton. I look at the <laughs> public enemy third base, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Flavor, I'll never forget this. So this is this old rickety building with the base, the building shaking. Flavor gets on top of a six stacked set of speakers and doing his flavor dance. And this thing is rocking like this. Like I thought he was gonna kill himself. The crowd is going crazy. Trinity's bam, bam, bam. Caribbean heads, everybody. It's in the middle of Brixton. I come on stage, we come on stage, crowd goes crazy, right? We're gonna end with gas face. Everybody, MC search, I cut off the music. 
I said, yo, black cat is bad, and I'm screaming it as loud as I can. Black cat is bad luck, bad guys wear black. Must have been the same queen that set up the poll tax. Get the We couldn't even finish the song. They mm. ran into the streets. They, I mean, it was crazy. Next day, London Times, third base gives the queen the gas face. Oh, shit. Crazy, right? Crazy. We tour the country. We come back. We do Wembley. 160,000 people. Mm. Biggest show I ever seen in my life. Was it tennis shit, Wembley? No, that's, Wem that's uh, Wembley the thing. Oh, this, is Wembley, right, go, this is right. Wembley Arena. All right, let's go. All right. This is, it's like 140,000, 160,000 people. And it's, now it's third base in PE. Right. But I go out there and we do gas phase. And before my even verse comes on, the whole crowd, black cat is bad luck, bad guys wear black, must have been the same queen that set up the pole tag. Mm. Crowd went crazy. Crowd went crazy. I learned from, from those guys that you always let the hottest group close. And when we went on tour on third base and we found out about Naughty and we found out about Cyprus, when we were on the West Coast, we let them close. All right. Yeah. Naughty, not, not, well, Naughty on the East Coast. Yeah, but they were the hottest on the West. They was hottest on the West, okay. See, all right, now, I also saw one thing too that you said, you knew Bushwick Bill from Bushwick. Oh yeah, from Brooklyn. Bushwick Bills from Bushwick? Yeah, that's why they called him Bushwick Bill. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. I thought they were from Texas. Come on, man. <laughs> DJ Premier from Texas, too, but he's from Brooklyn now. <laughs> Yo, that fucked me up. Because we sit yeah. here with Jay Prince. Yeah. yeah. I spent Bill, Scarface Bill, yeah, pretty Bill I didn't, he's, People can move, man. I'm from L.A. I, mean, I didn't know Bushwick Bills from, from New York Bushwick. Too, man. No, 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 that's different. Like... I thought that was, I, I, it did make sense when you said it. Right. But I was like, wait a minute, he's, I thought they were all from Texas. Well, they, well, they eventually I mean, were from Texas. He, all so from you Houston. knew him from Brooklyn. Yeah. How the fuck did you meet Bushwick Bill in Brooklyn? Just from being around the scene in Brooklyn. Like I told you, I'm the fucking Forrest Gump. I was everywhere. <laughs> like, I, I was fucking everywhere. So I met, I met Bill um, when I was with the Bad Boys. Inspector Gadget, remember that record? Mm. So that they half the dudes were from Bed Stuy, the other dudes were from Brownsville, and we just bumped into Bill. Wow! And yeah, we just became cool. And then like maybe maybe six months a year later, he moved to Houston. Okay. Bushwick Bill is originally from Bushwick. Yes, sir. That's why they call him Bushwick Bill. Maybe that's why. They traded. Fuck me up. They traded Premier for Bushwick Bill. I don't know. A hell of a trade. <laughs> That's a hell of a trade. It's a fucking great trade to me, man. Fuck it, man. Yo, let me tell you something. Both man. legends. Both legends. Rest in peace, Bushwick. Yo, man. Bill. I can't thank you so much, my brother. Like, um. Wow. So do you know I was gonna ask you not to smoke weed here, right? Yeah, it was gonna happen. No, I know, that's why I didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I just yeah. wanna let you know but, to your face that I love you. Yeah, I love you too, my brother. And, then, and, and I hope we exchange numbers and I hope yes, we get to of break course, bread. Man. And... Yes, listen, listen to me, bro. You are what we call a legend. You are what we call a hip hop aficionado or a person that stood with the test of time and is still standing here. We wanna tell you that to your face. We sit, we talk about you like that when you're not around. We want to talk about you like that when you are around. The stories, the like interviews, it was crazy because I had just came from New York and I missed my flight. I was supposed to go to LA and then come here. But it was great because I had I did two days study on you. So I'm just keep rolling up. I'm just keep rolling up. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out when and this would be my last question then. Yeah, sure. Alright. Cause when I can look at people time capsule of this game, mm -hmm. I can say this motherfucker hated hip hop and hair. Mm. When I look at my own shit, oh, I know when I hated hip hop. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I look at other people's shit, I know when they hated it. Definitively, I could not, if, you could correct me if I'm wrong, if there was ever a moment that you did just say, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I wanted to be a part of. When I looked at the footage that is available and the Googles that is available, was there ever a moment where he was just like, man, this is this is not it. This is not what I want to be a part of. Or this is, was there ever one? No. 
That one. No. That one. This culture gave me everything. Okay, so was it any point where you was disappointed? You can't yes. tell me no on that. No, yes. Mm -hmm. when, when Vanilla Ice and Hammer were on the radio and, and all people I respect that. were not on the radio. I respect um, that. That's, that's, that for me was heartbreaking. <coughs> um, you know, I always tried, and again, I don't like to use finite words, but I'll use it here. I always tried my best to figure out how I can contribute the best way I could, mm -hmm. even in building nonfiction and, and being a part of that and having a plan and going to Geffen and just saying, hey, these guys are going to be the Ramones of hip hop. Like, I just knew it. Like, I just knew that they didn't need radio to be right. millionaires and, you know, sell millions of records. It's just building a studio with Necro and Ill Bill in the middle of Brooklyn and making music. Um, nah, there's never been a time. <coughs> I, I owe hip hop everything. Um, if it wasn't for this culture accepting me and allowing me to do what I do, um, your girl would be telling me to go get a size seven shoe at Nordstrom. Um, I, everything that I've done in my, in my career has been around the philosophy that I was taught in the culture. Peace, unity, love, and having fun. And um, the tenets of this culture, um, because, you know, I come from a place where there was no term is hip-hop. You know, I heard Graham Mix at DST say this, like, you know, the term hip-hop was a derogatory term. We didn't want it to be called that. When I was coming up, it was kids dancing in the street, writing their names on the walls, DJing in parties and, and rapping in, in, in the street. Like, right. there was no thing. I think the New York Times called it that, or the New Yorker. We didn't want to call it that, but we adapted, right? Mm. I owe this culture everything, man. I don't know what I would, I, I would be a shoe salesman. I'm sure I would be selling something, but I would not be where I am and I would not be able to afford the life that I have and I would not be able to afford the family that I have. Um, but no, and I still look for new music and I still love new talent and I, and I still try to find, I still try to get up on shit before anybody else. I got a crew of homeboys that we call and I'm like, yo, you up on Marcus Craft? Mm. Oh, you up on blah, blah, blah? You know, I, I'm still that dude. I'm still that you know, 17 year old kid that instead of going to rock and soul, instead of going to JNR Music World, mm -hmm. instead of going to like, you know, wherever the record spot was in every place in this country, I'm on the internet mm -hmm. trying to find who's next. You know, like when I heard <coughs> J. Cole's warm up, mm -hmm. when I heard Lights Please, I said to my homeboy, I said, yo, this kid's about to be the greatest, one of the greatest. Lights Please, if you haven't heard that record, I don't know if you have or not, I would strongly suggest you spend some time with that record. But now, what's, what's, your, what's your favorite moment of hip-hop without you? Without you oh. participating in hip-hop? Oh, I mean, there's so many, bro. Um, the one both that top, comes up... Top, yeah, yeah, yeah. To have, <coughs> the one, the, one of my favorites is KRS at the Latin Quarter, about to perform, you know, the South Bronx. Oh. And while he's on stage, Melly Mel wow. comes up. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so just so we're clear... I was the first person with Skylar Rock, may rest in peace. I was there when the first time that record ever got played in a club. So I'm watching KRS and Scott get on stage and Melly Mel comes behind him and wants to battle him. Wow. And Mel pulls out a hundred. And from the stage, it looked like it was a pretty crumpled hundred. And Chris said, a hundred? And he turned to Scott and Scott handed him a band, a thousand. He said, how about a thousand? Uh, -da 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 -da. And then fucking South Bronx came on. It was a South Bronx. Uh, crowd went fucking ape shit. And that was that. It originally was wasn't a disc record to Queens. It originally was not. No, not, not at all. Okay. It was just yeah. stating the fact. Right. It was not a MC Shan. I have pictures of, and it's in Paradise's book, of Shan and, and KRS hanging out together in, in, the, in the LQ. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the things, like, you, when you talk about East-West and you talk about this and that, like, that's the streets that magnify that the hardest. Right, it's like, even, even Magic and Red Alert were cool. Like, they weren't, right. they didn't have beef with each other. We right. magnified that in the street. Right. right. But that's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorite memories of, of hip-hop that I always, that sticks with me. You know, Scholar Rock was like my big brother. Uh, you know what I mean? Rest in peace. Uh, and uh, and I, was, I was at the, I was there when... KRS and Miss Melody and Scotty Morris walked out of the Brox hospital when they found out that he was brain dead. Wow. And they were just, he just walked past me. He didn't even acknowledge me. And he kept mumbling the same thing. We just got to move on. 
We just gotta move on. And Friday was the show at Madison Square Garden. Wow. I'm the Forrest Gump. Damn it! God damn it, man. Make some noise, motherfucker. MC motherfucker, sir! So, I can't walk into your house without giving you some gifts. Yeah. So, I got some gifts for y'all. Oh, shit. Yep. I, I brought some we, gifts. We in. So, before I leave. You got the Stimmy Pack? That's for you. And that's for you. Stimmy Pack. Thank you, sir. And that's for you. And that's for you. And I got two more Ooh. in my pocket. Ooh. So this is the 30th anniversary of Derelicts. Wow. wow. And the 30th anniversary of Pop Goes a Weasel. And the this 30th anniversary of KMD, Mr. Hood. So oh. those are our challenge coins These that we're are... dropping well, this on like timeless.com. Not challenge no, coins. It's challenger coins. And I got stands for y'all, so I wanted y'all to have them there. The first off the mint, so you guys are the first ones to wow, get them. Wow, brother. There was a camera, so we could uh, uh, zoom in. God damn it! Yeah, I'm about to pack man. these up. Y'all need to peep pack this. Packing the shit up. We had them in the velvet. In the velvet, you yeah, know, we yeah, had to velvet, do it proper. I, we had to do it proper. Yeah, you definitely. So yeah, when you're ready to do the T O N Y one, you, when you're ready to do the uh, <laughs> yeah, when you're ready to do the uh, the C N N ones, you let yeah. me know. Let's go. I have no idea what we doing come out, but I'm gonna it's call just, you. It's, just a, it's just a coin. It's just a coin, yeah. bro. It's not Bitcoin. No, it's a collector's coin. It's not an NFT. Not an NFT. But I will share this. This is dope. And and. April 15th. NFT? NFT uh -huh. with Ernie Panicoli. Uh -huh. We're creating an NFT of his infamous Biggie on, in the Jeep image. You want to uh, give him like a, people a quick rundown of NFT? Before yeah, we get so out an NFT is going called, going it's, NFT stands for non-fungible token. It's a digital, basically a digital imprint or digital code, thank you. And that digital code is encrypted with a watermark. It's a one of one. Authenticated by the blockchain. Right. right, and you can either buy it on an auction, either cash or crypto or both. Mm. The one that we're doing on April 15th will be Ethereum. We partner with Ethereum to do that. Um, if you're unfamiliar, go to OpenSea.com, mm -hmm. and we will help those who want to get involved open up a crypto wallet. Right. Because that's the other part of the education, is if you want to get wealth, real wealth, then you have to understand cryptocurrency. Right. So we Coinbase will is one of the apps to right. use, right? OpenSea. So we are helping those who want to be involved in this NFT auction mm -hmm. um, create their cryptocurrency wallet. Wow. So you can do that, and then we'll be doing others yeah. towards the no, year. No, no, we're, we're actually working on something already. Good. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Well, if you really want to get some money, you holla at me. Oh, yeah. my God damn. Let's take some bitches and take a drop. And this is it, man. I can